And then one, two, three. It's like saying, all good, right? It's like saying action. No, why you? Action? My, you need to do it twice. No, time. don't don't. Uh, oh, it sucks. God, no, no, that just that blows. Here we are, the Anthony show. Yes. <laughs> um, not entertaining at all. No. Nope. At all. It was the good. Usually I'm not so. The good joke from Anthony. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, rough start on the audio, but we finally made it. We're here. We have our podcast going. It feels great. Take two. Let's see if it uh, holds up for this time at least. Yeah. Yeah, so what it. are we called? Um, I think we're gonna go with "That's the Point" podcast. I, I do believe that was the consensus. Um, as you guys know, obviously there are three more of us. We'll see if they ever make an appearance. Or if you didn't know, because it's not obvious, but Noah thinks it's obvious for some reason, there are three more of us. Um, uh, I believe Ethan Van Kiley, Andrew Dell, and Henry Jason are our other roommates uh, at school here. So uh, at some point you may see them pop in, pop out. We have four mics, and we may have all of us on at once, maybe if uh, they ever stop playing uh, video games. So They're really into car soccer. It's kind of annoying, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you had to make that clear. I mean, look, to be fair... Like, as we were speaking about before we started, you know, everyone's got their little thing. Yeah. You guys, obviously, if I grew up playing video games, like, obviously, like, Dell did. Dell is on a whole nother level. I think it's probably the worst in the house. Yeah. As far, worse no, as in. Worse as doesn't in. Doesn't leave his room. Doesn't leave his room. Right. But definitely could be any of us. No, it could have been any of us. And I think it still can be any of us. Uh, I think Ethan, what saves Ethan is the fact that his xbox is in the living room right and uh henry henry's definitely dressed up there with dell and time spent in the actual bedroom with the door shut playing video games area but mm. you know that's how it is hey power to you if you can live on that power to you for sure yeah no i just get slightly bored and you know a little depressing when you're in your room for eight <laughs> hours a day not not being like no, mean no, no, or anything, no, but like like when i used to play i get on those like i used to play a lot and i'd be playing maybe eight plus hours a day i'd sit there just straight playing like what was it, call of duty whatever it was <laughs> from the age of like 11 all the way to whatever throughout high school and when you at the end of the day you're like i didn't get anything done besides well, video games yes you're achieving stuff mm-hmm. but like when i when i'd be done playing sometimes i'd be like wow i just wasted the whole day playing but okay. that was just me it's kind of funny though because like you know the way you just talked about video games is probably how you're gonna talk about it to your kids one day and like and you as you're speaking i'm thinking of my parents who were like or even my grandparents were like, yeah, we would be outside all day and we would we would know to come home when, you know, the street lights came on. You, you're you the complete opposite. Yeah, I was in my room all day and uh, I didn't know when to stop. I was up all night. Yeah, I can only <laughs> imagine what, yeah, exactly you're going to lose that in transition. But that just happens, I believe. Well, I, and the thing is, I don't think it's going, it's not going away. Well, I mean, I, video games. Oh, no, they're, no, they're so, barely beginning. Exactly. So, I mean, the question is, is how does it look in... 10, well, years. you think about it right now, the edge of, you know, expanding is there's uh, VR as well as full body immersion right. for your house you can buy now. You see that shit? I don't know if we... The if fucking we, treadmills? What, what's the one movie? The uh, play, Ready, Player Ready Player One? one Dude, yep. I swear to you, and I swear to you, that's going to be what it's like. When, you think that's what it's going to be like? When we're like, I, maybe not when we're alive, but like, I think how you just talked about, yeah, well, I was on Call of Duty all day and it felt like I didn't get anything done. It's gonna be like, yeah, I was, in, you know, I was in whatever they, whatever the whatever fuck they the call it, is, yeah, yeah. Like the coal, the coal box, that's what they call it. Okay, I'm naming it right now. Okay, the thirty coal years, box, yeah. the prediction, you know, hot takes. Colin Coward, you're taking a hot take for six years in the future. I'm taking one for thirty years in the future. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's a joke though. Bring him up alone is no, he's. I mean, gotta respect it, right? No, I love him. I love him. The one thing about playing video games a lot is I tried to turn it into something that was worthwhile, but then went horribly wrong, which is why this is why I we're gonna my YouTube video. right here. This is where we're gonna drop in a clip of Wait, your we're, Minecraft. Oh, you're yeah, you're trying to, shout, you're no, trying to no, shout out your he, he needed to brag about his Minecraft. Yeah. You guys, you're shouting it out. The oh, I'm not shouting it out. You're not shouting it out. Hey, what, so I, I shouldn't no, find that. We're definitely gonna drop. Be ready. We're dropping a clip or a link something. Uh, yeah, in, in the description or if you whatever platform you're watching this on, there may or may not be a link to his old channel. I'm not going to edit in a clip of it, though, therefore. Okay. The problem is I have most of those videos privated now, so there'll be that some That is videos. an issue. Maybe. At some point, if we blow up, it's going to get out there. Yeah, no, if we, if we get enough... Uh, like following or whatever, I can totally see us making Anthony release those videos just oh, for yeah. fun. I mean, nothing to do with like Noah because we didn't know him at the time before school or whatever. Mm-hmm. But just some of us, you'll get I me. Mean, you'll get some. You'll get throwback Anthony, Ethan, and me for sure. Um, I don't think there's any Henry in there. Definitely not any Andrew. Um, but overall, definitely funny. Yeah. There are some videos up though of slightly older 
us playing GTA and then some Call of Duty. Yeah, but yeah, no there is. Crash. I do remember that. I, those videos, um, although awful, were kind of funny to me simply because it was just me yelling at you the whole time. But that's just our day to day life here, especially here. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I kind of liked how I recorded those because it's like a blast in the past. Like we're able to go back and see what we sound like and what we did for eight hours a day. But, right. Yeah. I mean, you go back and Ethan sounds like an eight year old girl. So it's and amazing. He still does today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he might, he may or may not still today, but, um, no, definitely not as bad as that. What video was it? It was one, I think it was a call of duty game. Oh yeah. It was, it was call like, of duty. Where oh, it was yeah. the stop sign or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. It was, was called like, geez. Call of duty. Uh, back when the modern warfare remastered had a uh, prop hunt in it. That was, what that was speaking a different language right now yeah see some people didn't uh, grow up on mw2 and mw3 uh, cod lobbies and the game chats it, and, it and it shows it shows, it shows. but I, I am the odd man out here it's okay well yeah well whatever um so for anyone ever uh anyone wondering uh the reason why we settled on uh that's the point podcast being the name we went through like 40 name ideas and we're about to just give up. Um, but then we realized that we all are ignorant uh, a-holes and we argue a lot. So one thing that one of the biggest, uh, you know, someone who takes the biggest opinion sometimes, Anthony, yes. uh, he'll, if he you know, gets cornered or like if that something or if he wins an argument, he'll hit us with the quote, that's the point. Um, you know, just um, putting more emphasis <laughs> on his, his victory or his, his loss, you know, either or. So we just thought if, you know, if that's available name, we're going to take that because we were running. There was no <laughs> options. We, we had so many good names all taken, though. So yeah. I wish we would have had a camera rolling on all the names we came up with because some of them were really big winners and others were really big misses. I'll admit mainly misses from my part yeah no <laughs> no was no was uh, naming is not my uh, strong suit at yeah, all no you, you wanted to laugh, like you wanted to say like yeah that's a good idea or laugh out of like pity but like when right. like Noah's sitting on the other side of the table and he just comes up with some name and you just get used like that's so bad Noah please when you when you spend eight hours with these guys you know even spend eight hours with me you, you get pretty comfortable with saying Noah shut the fuck up yeah or anyone shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah, but just, um it doesn't really matter either way <laughs> so yeah I know but uh I think it's yeah, currently 9.47 p.m. on a Sunday night here. Um, so for those of you uh, who don't know us, we attend, uh, you know, we're at school. We're at co in college right now. Kettering University. Yep. Uh, used to be GMI. We're out of Flint, Michigan is where we're at. Um, yeah. So basically the idea behind our channel here is that uh, five, technically six of us, um, are all roommates basically who got a house together and that's kind of the idea of what we got going um, um yeah so i mean it, we just thought it'd be a lot of the conversations we have on a day-to-day -day basis here are you know really fun we think <laughs> well, uh, they also get pretty heated they get heated fun or you might find them interesting or annoying either way we thought that we should definitely record some of these right. conversations well we th you know and i i can just speak from hanging out with you guys uh he, you guys just heard him he said five guys rooming together i'm I'm on the sixth uh these five guys all you know kind of grew up right in the same city went to high school together uh i just happened to meet them when we came up here uh and I said, I believe it was last term, our first term as freshmen, we were watching a Joe Rogan podcast and I go, dude, we could totally do this. I yeah. mean, um, you know, so you get late night homework nights at an engineering college like we are at, uh, and you're sitting there and at some point something just breaks and you start talking about God knows what and some argument spurts off. And yeah, and it doesn't even have to be at night either. It's really just right. like it could be like one in the afternoon between classes and something could just break the hell out. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, a perfect example would be the other day when uh, we were done with class. I mean, I was done with class for the day. I'm, I'm chilling in my dorm room waiting for you guys because I believe you guys had like one more. And I and you guys called me you're like, oh, when are we going to the gym? Next thing I know, it's uh, Ash Wednesday, and just a little preference here. And Andrew brings up what Lent's all about, and yeah. somehow we erupt into a three-hour debate between the two of you. Yeah, about, and we don't even need to get into detail. Right? About yeah, it we don't even. But um, totally tangent, just not even really related to the whole explanation we were given to Andrew. No. Yeah, Andrew actually walked out of the room in the yeah. first five minutes because he was fed up with uh, what? Because you know we were just getting you know more and more into the conversation. Andrew 
was like lost so he just left it andrew left andrew start open you know pandora's box and left <laughs> and I, let us and let us solve it for three hours the, the funniest part about it was i was on the call for the first half an hour yeah, yeah, on and FaceTime. i was like i was like oh this is going nowhere let me go to the gym so i'm sitting there in the gym still and, I'm, going. and i'm still listening i it's i'm hitting cleans and I'm listening to you guys go. Still talking about just it. Just going back and forth, right? Yeah. And I'm hearing Anthony go, but that's the point. But that's the point. <laughs> that's right? the point. And, that's the point. And, I mean, eventually my phone died. And these guys kept going for so long. But, geez. And like, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> that conversation went on way longer than it probably should have. <laughs> but it's not even like, like that's just one example. Like, right. that happens so much that it's like, uh, if that happened on a podcast episode, obviously, We'd let it roll out, and we'd have exactly. all the footage from it, so it'd be effing hilarious. Uh, oh yeah, and the and the best part is that our our debates are not at all limited. I mean, we're not no. sitting here debating about sports every day, Christianity or, or, or Christ, God you know, or whatever. Like, right, it's, and it's it's so it's, it's it's literally education, school, sports, your morals, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It can be cars. It can be uh, you know, literally name anything that you can think of that. A boy over the age of eighteen can think about, right? And it can be about that. So I would say, for being at an engineering school and talking about cars as much as some of us do, that the debates haven't really gone as deep as they're. One day, someone's going to say something to Ethan about a car he likes or doesn't like, and, and we're going to get into a big one. So the the I think we're avoiding the big one simply because of the point that uh, Noah, like you, didn't gr- like grow up with us. Mm-hmm. So like through our because um, for anyone like again there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a lot of times where I say for anyone who doesn't understand or know but uh, like Ethan and I were best friends since we were four years old right, right? from then till now mm-hmm. we've talked so much about stuff like favorite cars and mm-hmm. what he hates and what I hate and what I love and what he loves that like we never get into an in-depth conversation about that stuff anymore because simply because of the fact is we both know where the conversation goes right so for for no it's slightly new experience it will happen eventually i feel like but it's kind of the point where it's like almost not worth our breath right because we know exactly where the conversation goes every time so we just we poke fun we poke fun at it but it kind of just hangs there and we don't actually end up talking about anything no, about I, it. i completely agree and i mean i'm not sure if you guys see but like sometimes when he's sitting there playing forza Especially Ethan, I don't know why, because you know Ethan likes to keep to himself. He's not one to ruffle feathers. I mean, yeah. he'll flat out tell you you're wrong, but yeah. uh, he won't sit there and debate with you about it. So I do like to try to kind of see where his tastes lie. I mean, you gotta respect the man. He knows everything there is to know when it comes to the cars that he likes. Yeah. But you know, I'm not gonna sit there and say, "Well, your taste is garbage," because I, you know, he'll out fact me any day. Of the no. Week. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to outfax someone who likes to money shift their Toyota Tacoma. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't bring Tammy into this. We can't bring Tammy. Okay, Noah's Noah's backing out of a spot after the gym, right? No, 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 no. I'm going to get this one out before you go. (laughs) Noah's backing out of the spot, right? In reverse, Anthony. This man looking over the seat still, right? Then finally brings his head forward. Ethan in the passenger, me in the back seat. Noah into drive while still going backwards <laughs> right so we're we're sitting here me and ethan look at each other and ethan goes dude because noah didn't think anything of it and then ethan's like okay it was like a- you know how bad that is for your car and okay, i was like on. oh really that does something to your car hold on, hold on. in my defense in my defense one car's brand new right two and it's at least so oh, okay fuck, all right fuck whoa, the whoa, transmission whoa. bro to- hey. <laughs> made it toyota if you're seeing this uh i didn't do that they they're, they got the wrong guy Oh yeah, no, you're you're different, Noah Cole. You're different, from different, different Noah Cole, different yeah. guy. But oh, he's from England. By if the way. anything, it was more of a park bomb than a money shift. I just no, yeah, <laughs> no. The money shifts happen when uh, Ethan's in the passenger seat and likes to pull your emergency brake. Right. So that that is, um, yeah. I I was very lucky. I'm blessed that he didn't do that to me the other night because we would have been dead. Noah well, had to get taught how to unengage his okay, his parking not, brake. Had, all right, my parking brake on the Malibu. In my defense, the Malibu I had before the Tacoma. I did not have to pull up. No, I get it. It was completely garbage. It was gone, so I just pushed it forward. Just go, oh, oh, <laughs> right down. Yeah, no, I thought it was it was pretty funny at first. It's like the the videos online you see of like the boyfriend who pulls on his girlfriend. Right. And he's like he's like all right, get it down, and she's like she just can't <laughs> she she can't do it. She doesn't she's never done it before. But I don't know. I think it's funny. Right. So basically, the moral of the story is Noah's driving the first Toyota that's not going to hit half a million miles. Okay, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Coming, I, yeah, exactly. Coming from someone who, who drives this first, uh, I drive a Toyota 4Runner. Um, first 
first time or probably the only time I think besides like far in the future that like I usually like, like American companies I like those a lot um, but Toyota has the formula down son they know what they're doing uh, they have longevity for days unless your name's Noah Cole and you like to go from reverse to drive I in one go I completely love all car companies uh, most car companies American car companies I love you guys please bring down your lease prices please uh okay so, so go, get your, go get your lease brand new podcast go get your lease price of your bmw and tell me how much lower okay. it is than Hold your on. american ford fusion right but tell me why i could get a tacoma for cheaper than i could get a uh what was it oh, oh yeah any american sedan or any american car for that uh um, branding hmm? branding I'm not defending you. I'm not defending the American car companies. Of course, they're cheap, but they're cheap for a reason. People buy their shit. No, I, I, I agree. I'm not. So, I, I love the American car. If I could drive American, I would. And like I said, after after this one, it's probably going to be an American, but then I'll be able to afford it. None, none of us can can speak on it because none of us we're all in college, and most of, some of us, you know, obviously gaining debt from paying for tuition. Right. But going forward. Um, you look at things like, like obviously none of us could have afforded a brand new light duty truck, right? But you can go on, you can go to websites right now and you're like, wow, no wonder you see so many Hemi Dodge 1500s, Ram 1500s out there because you can get a lease for those trucks for $250 a month. Right. It's a light duty truck, 300, 279 a month you without what, a deal. You know what the crazy part is? Is that in Michigan and like Michigan specifically, those cars don't lose values. Like a truck in Michigan does not lose its value. Uh, well, yeah. it has use. Yeah, no, it has it, use here. Yeah, well, um, right, but it's actually more in more places than you think. Trucks don't lose value, um, really? especially it's just because in the, South. the fact that they can actually haul stuff. People can use them for work or anything. They just don't lose value like a sedan does. Most trucks hold value regardless of where you're at. Um, Michigan actually. Michigan trucks lose value slightly faster than places like the South simply because Michigan uses effing salt to take right. care of the snow in yeah. the winter. So, and some places don't even have snow in their winters unless this year where Texas, well, most years, the Southern states do get like a day or two of snow, but, um, nothing like this, year. nothing like, nothing like Michigan, nothing like any, nothing like Buffalo, nothing like Minnesota, anything like that. Um, but yeah, no trucks hold value unlike any other vehicle simply because of their usefulness. Right. Um, and usually they're, you know, purchased by someone, usually purchased by someone who sought after a solid vehicle. Not always, not nowadays, especially not <laughs> nowadays, especially not even looking at him, just saying. Oh, like, I thought, I definitely thought that was <laughs> no, a shot taken like, me. Like, like, think about all the people that buy, like, Dodge Rams because they're $279 a month. You can fishtail a Dodge Ram. Yeah. A, like, you can just pull oh, out easily. in the summer on a concrete road. You can just gas out a Dodge Ram, and you're fishtailing on the main road. Like, it's nothing. Well, their back ends are incredibly light, so. You know, trucks, well, too, but I, you, can do it, you can do it in a lot of vehicles. Yeah. But I'm just saying, the fact is that you can get that truck relatively cheap. I mean, not, like, I'm saying, right. like, the whole looking at who's your buyer type of thing. Well, and, yeah, you know, the other interesting thing about trucks nowadays is if you look at a truck now compared to a truck you know, 30 years ago. Now you can get a truck that's, you know, borderline as nice on the inside as, you know, Escalade is. You right. Because they, they, yes. they do that. Whereas when, you know, I want to say when pickup trucks first became a thing, you couldn't, you know. It was no, like, they were work vehicles. Right. That's that's yeah. their main purpose. Now, but now there's, you know, kids like me who, like you said, they see the lease price, they get their dad to come help them with, buy a lease, and that's... You know, that's all it is. That's especially it is. you see when you talk about mid-sized trucks, especially. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, there are some companies that, uh, like, they limit their big engine production anyway, and then you're looking at the mass amount of engines that they shove it. They only there's no not a single company out there, um, foreign or American, puts out a mid-sized pickup truck with an eight-cylinder engine. So you're looking, mm -hmm. you're looking at a cheap vehicle, relatively speaking, for a new car with less than 50 miles on it right, right. so yeah. either way you're getting a steal technically or you could just be smart and then not buy a new car yeah you could absolutely 100 yeah. I, I never claimed that that well, was smart. Not, and i never but like like i said i'm not i'm definitely not full you know fully yeah. in on this thing this is my dad help, is definitely helping me out right mm -hmm. i mean what no one said what year it was huh no one said what year it was right but um no, I I agree. I mean, leasing's nice because especially when you when you're older, right? Like so once you get established, right? Yeah, once you're established, 
and you're able to do that. If you're able to do that, it's nice because you get essentially a new car every two or every three years. Right. And, you know. It's also nice because at that point in your life, you don't really have time to take care of it. Right. Like, Absolutely. With my car, I'm repairing it every time something needs to happen. I'm doing it myself. In 19. Yeah. Turning 20. I mean, and you and you borderline enjoy it, do you not? Yeah. Okay. I enjoy learning about Some it. Some people want nothing to do with a car. Right. So that be, I think, like, nah, I think I know, everyone knows, is leasing markets not only are aimed for, you know, the people who don't have time in their life, but the people who don't give a rat's ass about vehicles. So it's like... I mean, at the end of the day, some people who love cars obviously still get leases. I, it's, it's not saying it's a horrible thing. It's just when you look at it as someone who financially is looking for the best financial option, mm-hmm. they're going to go with buying an old car that right. is reliable because simply you're going to get a vehicle that will last you at least five years if you know which car to buy for the price of maybe six grand, seven grand, right. less than that even, even four grand, right? No, so like, when you pull out a lease, right, your down payment might be over two grand, over three grand, depends on you know what your deal is, what vehicle it is. And when you're all said and done, you're five grand into it on your monthly and your down payment or whatever the hell it is. And at the end of the day, you don't get a car out of it when you could have got a $5,000 vehicle that lasts over five years and well, there's your value. But I, And I think the difference is because is, he just talked about you just talked about how with a when you own the vehicle you do have to put money into it to fix it up yeah. so the way i think they a lot of people look at it is do i pay up front or do i pay in the long run right you know? so leasing you know you're kind of paying as you go whereas owning for the most part you're you're putting the money up front and then dealing with any kind of hiccups that come yeah. your way and another thing that i know you can do is like when you um go to a dealer and you want to just buy a new car because people do buy new cars right they make they still make monthly payments on it um more expensive than leasing because yeah, you're going to own you, the vehicle at the end right you finance it and usually like a lease like obviously like i said a down payment and a lease you're like five grand into it when you're all said and done Five grand doesn't buy you a new vehicle, right? Yeah. So, but when you're buying a vehicle, some people set up payment plans to buy the car in two to five, or even five to ten years. Right. And if you're if you're one of those people that can afford to buy out an entire brand new car in two years, then that payment is quintuple. Of exactly. Leases. So, and then you just cover the cost. It's simple math. Like, and that's that's for a cheap new vehicle, right? So you're talking twenty five thousand dollar car in right. two years for. The price of and the other thing about leases is that you know the value of the car really doesn't depreciate in that three two to three years and it's not your problem anyway even right though it does exactly depreciate. so well i know but i'm saying so even if you were even if you were going to own a new car though i don't think i think most people the way they would go about doing it is you go and you get a lease you get let's say you get twelve thousand miles a year but you know you're going over that 12 right right so then your car is going to depreciate at whatever you go over those miles because when they give you that MSRP value, that buyout value, it's on the basis of you hitting that, you know, let's say you got 12000 for three years, that's 36,000 miles. Let's say you go over that. Well, now you have to obviously cover the cost of whatever you went over. And then at the same time, that vehicle is now going to depreciate X amount. So maybe your, maybe your MSRP value goes a little down. So now it's going to be cheaper than it would have been had you gone and just said, yeah, I just want to buy this one. Yeah, I think the two time, two situations where I think um, I could see myself leasing a vehicle in my future is um, when I'm financially stable enough and like well off enough to where, like we said already, like, you know, you can afford your own shit. Right. Um, and leasing is just the easier thing in your life at that point. Or in like, especially if I didn't have a vehicle that I like wanted to have forever and I didn't want to be my daily they're like, that's not worth fixing in my opinion. Like if I bought a new truck, right. Mm-hmm. At the age of 40, the odds are I'm driving that truck. If, cause like, let's say all your kids are out of sports, whatever. And you're, all you're doing is going to work. Right. Right. And you didn't have an economy vehicle. You just had like, let's just say you bought a truck. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has 50 miles on it and you're buying it out right that truck's going to last you for decades if you're not driving a crap ton of miles right. so odds are um the only time i see myself really leasing a vehicle is if it's um not necessarily like a sports car mm-hmm. or anything a muscle car but something of the sort where it's um like a cool car right. to the point where it has something unique about it 
and it, they offer a lease on it because you can't lease every vehicle. Some vehicles are you, you can yeah. only buy, and so like because you can't lease a Ford GT, right? Right. No. Okay. Um, well, you can't even get your hands anywhere close. That's just an example. Right. When, when well, you yeah. could, you couldn't lease it. Like if you were one of the five hundred people selected, you still couldn't lease it. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's just an example. I don't think you can like you can't lease a Dodge Viper when they had production of it. Right. Either. So, um, like I'm saying is if not something that class, but a little bit underneath that, like let's say. Uh, Mustang. Like let's say let's no let's say uh, I'm not even a huge FCA guy, but like let's say a Dodge Challenger, uh, let's say a Red Eye, right? Hold so on, hold on, hold on. Best American sports car, right? Or not muscle no, 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 car, muscle car, muscle car, muscle car. Um, Best I'll American muscle, muscle car, car right now. I'll agree on muscle car. Modern or old? Modern, right now. I've said right now it's the best American muscle car. Muscle car. GT500. Okay. Anyway, okay. we're not going well, to. We're not going to get into that. Right <laughs> now, but you're wrong. I mean, that's the point. I mean. <laughs> No, it's long story short. Noah's gonna argue the body style. Anthony's gonna argue the stats. Okay. That's all. Yeah. That's that, yeah. Fair enough. There yes. we go. Okay. Anyway, uh-huh. so because everyone knows GT500 beats a red eye, but doesn't beat a demon in a straight line. That's yeah. the simple story. But yes, the Dodge but the GT500, looks more like a muscle car. The than volume the GT500. of GT500. Volu- yes, just, it of looks badass. It does oh, look it does look badass. The GT500 looks, looks nice. I uh, 100. Oh, yeah. I, I love the new GT500. Yeah. One thing that does. One it. thing I do though, like that defines American, is volume, in my opinion. Like the like the ability for an American to buy it, yeah. GT500 beats Demon ten to one right, in that yeah. category simply because they didn't make as many Demons. But or Ford hasn't. The Ford will make more GT500s available than they made Demons available. Disregarding the fact that I, where I was going with this is, <laughs> let's say it was a, let's say it was Sorry. a red eye, right? Yeah. Okay. I could see myself leasing a vehicle similar to that, and the fact is that you during that lease. Mm-hmm. You can decide whether or not you want to buy out the lease and own the right. car, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lease is a really cheap way to get your hands on a vehicle and look at its future without actually owning it. Exactly. So if I looked at this, let's say it was like a 2021 Red Eye, right? And I bought it, or I didn't buy it, I leased it, right? A year from now, they say we're no longer selling Red Eyes. So I have the last generation Red Eye as a lease, and I've been paying it at lease price. You got really lucky. Now I'm uh, buying it out. Because now I have the last generation of Challenger Red Eyes, right? right? Yeah. And that's just as, fu- like, financially, uh, now I have a cool car that's going to be the last of its kind. As if, but if I was just leasing that car, I don't know if you know this, Scat Packs, oh, Scat Packs more so than Red Eyes. Challengers, Dodge cars, kind of dime of a dozen. Same with Ford, Mustang, same with Chevy Camaro, all dime a dozen, right? right? We can all agree on that. Um, I wouldn't see myself buying out a lease on a standard Red Eye. Mm-hmm. Um, other than the fact that I know the value will go up on my car now that they're not making them anymore. Right. Um, that would be a, a situation where I'd love to lease a car. Or if I was uh, financially stable or well off enough to one day um, get a lease for my kid who's in high school. Right. Right. Or in college. My, the way I look at it is the only way I'd ever lease a car is if I already have my project car. So, like, currently my current daily is also my project car because all my time goes into that. But in the future, I prefer to have a project car that isn't a 2002 Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> so, um, gotta love the Tahoe though. Oh, it's a great car. It's great shifting. Yeah. Great shifting. Dri- <laughs> drifting. Yeah, great at drifting. Four doors more. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> we'll let you guys interpret that. Uh, yeah, it's a great car and I love it. But I don't want to work on my daily driver every day. So I'd always have preferably like a nice car that I can take out on weekends or take to car shows. But then I also want my daily lease. Where I can just, I know it's reliable. I can take it to a dealership to get it fixed, and I don't have to Under spend contract, my time on it. Right. Under insurance. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess that comes down to, or in my mind, an uh, interesting scenario for me then becomes look at Ethan, whose favorite car, whose ultimate grocery getter is the uh, cha- or Charger, right? He's uh, a, it's, 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 okay, I don't want to put words in Ethan's mouth. The top three is the Charger, four door, right. um, super, super, right? But. but uh, as far as knowing, oh, it's all I can tell you. It's either that, like a a Hellcat um, Charger, mm-hmm. or it's a um, an Audi. Uh, S- it's the hatchback, right? It's it's, 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 okay. it's an S it's an S class Audi. I, it's it's the four O with the supercharger, on right? It. But back back to what okay, it, yeah, like an S eight or something right. crazy. So back S8 to what I was saying S8. is, in his scenario, right? Mm-hmm. He thinks it's so much better, you know. I don't want to put words in his mouth either. But when I say I like the Challenger more than the Charger, he goes, no, it's much cooler with the Charger that you can put more people in it and go that amount of speed, right? right. Or you can put groceries in the back of or it. Or your kids, right? whatever. Or whatever, right? Wife and kids, whatever. So in that scenario, 
do you lease it because you're like, hey, this does everything I need to do? Or do you just outright go, nope, I want to buy this one? I think I think you lease a Dodge Charger. I don't think you buy a Dodge Charger. No, I, I agree. I think, I think the only way in which you do buy one of those vehicles is you know that it's special from the others. So the Demon, if you could have gotten your hands on a Demon, yeah. I think you buy one of those. Yeah, I, I just think... The value is already right. skyrocketing on the well, yeah. It, it, when you're treating your vehicle like uh, the family car, exactly. Uh, look at it as in if to Ethan, that four-door Super Saloon or your four-door sedan right. is now your family SUV. Exactly. So you're not going to buy that outright. Unless it's used and used, used and whatever. Also, the, the only thing I'd ever buy out would be something that I know is going to increase in value. Like, I'd never yes. buy out. Or not depreciate as fast yeah. as well, other vehicles. One thing that's really interesting right now in the car industry, American car industry, is the Ford Bronco, right? Yes. So, whether you like it or not, that's, you know, personal preference. But what's interesting about it is that there's already a list of people who are going to get it right mm -hmm. they have top whatever but because of covid and everything production lines are slow and they can't produce as many as they thought so eventually they are going to hit the lot eventually you are going to be able to lease a ford bronco right yeah but if you're on the list right now to be like the top one of the first 50 or whatever mm -hmm. you still have the option to lease it right they're still giving you the option to lease it even though there's going to be only 50 put out the first round or whatever the number is. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's 50 for sure. But in that case, scenario, although to me, that's a car that you lease, right? Because, you know, hey, it's the first time coming out, whatever. I want to I try it out. I want to see how I like it compared to my Ford Explorer, whatever. But now that if you know, if you're able to be one of those first 50, I, to me, you now buy it. Because someone's going to pay you double what you pay yeah. to buy it if yeah. you have the means to buy it you buy that car and then absolutely. sell absolutely if you have the means to buy it you whether it's on uh if you're balling enough to buy it straight up or if you are right. simply leasing or not leasing but making payments on it or um, you can be me who loves the ford bronco and i want to own like a 96 bronco that <laughs> is my project car i own it i work on it i buy it and then i want a new bronco as my lease my family car right, right. but i'm saying in that case scenario you wait out until the, yeah. and the until they're more available to yes. lease. Why would you ever yep. try? You know, and you know, cars change over time. Why would you buy the first generation of the new Bronco when you know yeah. a second generation is bound to happen? Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't want to speak too much on other people's lives, but I do know someone who was in line for a Bronco, had it customized, fully loaded. Right, it was nice, <laughs> probably a seventy thousand dollar Bronco. Right? right, and he was in line, and then. As time goes on, because of the, you know the wait time to get this thing, he's like, well, I need. He's gonna need a car, new car soon. He leases, right? So then, what he does is, he's like, okay, probably. I'm, okay, I'm done waiting with this. Cancels that. Gets in line. Mm -hmm. he, he ended up with. Uh, for right now, he had another lease. It was actually, I believe, it was a Grand Cherokee. Um, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he just stayed on the uh, Grand Cherokee. But he, uh, multi, uh, in the same move at the same dealership put himself in to line up himself up with a gladiator that he customized. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he did that. Right. Um, you know, and it, again, it's just about, it's just personal preference at the end of the day, uh, what you want to lease, what you want to buy. Some people love leasing. I don't blame them. Some people love buying. Don't blame them either. It really just depends on your, uh, economic situation and what you're looking forward to do with that vehicle in regards to how much you like it and th how much you want to keep it. I think a big part of leasing versus non leasing, like whether you like it or not is your upbringing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, whatever. Obviously, I think I think that your surroundings affect you in Absolutely. all sorts of ways, right? Yep. But I think that's a pivotal one. Uh, perfect example is me. Like I look at leasing, like you know, like that's what, like that's probably what I'll do as soon as I have money, you know, saved mm -hmm. up and everything. That's what I will. Yeah. That's what I'll primarily do. I don't ever see myself buying a car unless it's. You know, I've saved up money, and it's like, oh, that's the car I've wanted for a while. You know, and yeah. I and I buy, I buy something that's used, but you know, is the specs that I'm looking for. Like, perfect example is a '68 Mustang. Mm -hmm. Like, I would love to buy one of those cars. Right. But like, a, like right now, like a 2020, what like a brand new car, I would never want to buy. I'm no, just, yeah, yeah, it has nothing to it really. Nothing right. That you want exactly. About it. Yeah. So, in that sense, I I think leasing is fine. Like, I think leasing is a you know really you know cool thing you get to own a car for two years and then you know you could get a, the new generation of that yeah or you could go to a new one yep. whereas when you look at um other people who 
came up with just buying cars. So I set a perfect example, and I never got to the example. My girlfriend, her family owns cars, right? Like they, yeah. they buy used cars, and they find good deals. Uh, all their cars are going to run forever and whatever. And, they, yep. and it's not like they're looking for $2,000 cars. Like, no, they're looking for good cars that are going to last them a while. Right. So she is very... No, why would you ever lease? Like leasing, is stupid. You know, yep. you never know how many miles you're gonna drive. This, that, and other. Right. Whereas I am like, well, you know, you can map out how many miles you're gonna drive. You can get a decent price. You know, if the, obviously, if your economics don't make sense, you're not gonna do it. But right. I'm not afraid of leasing. Whereas, you know, someone like my girlfriend who was brought up on cars that they bought, not cars that they leased, thinks leasing really isn't all that. No, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if Anthony wanted to jump in on this, but the like the same ideas uh, when Anthony and I were growing up, like uh, there was a few vehicles that our my dad, our dad and mom shifted between. But um, I know for the longest time, and even the car that Anthony and I drove in high school when we got our license till when we graduated, uh, we drove a car that was literally what they buy it for. We just needed a new car because we had the minivan leased, and mm-hmm. then that ran out. So yep. we. One of dad's friends. Had we lived car. in Indiana at the time, or still does actually. I, I couldn't remember if he was the one that moved out of there or not. He might have actually. But um, they bought, they literally uh, turned in that lease in Indiana with the dealership in Indiana, which we drove down there and we picked up a 98 Ford Expedition for $1,800 or something. Yeah, it had like 160,000 miles? 161, I something like that. Yeah, and, and now it's at 270. Right. 279. So that's a great, that's a great car. And they got it for like, Less than two grand. Exactly. And, and yeah, it's not like we didn't ever have to take it to the shop because right. Well, it's at plenty of I think I think one thing that people really, um, this is the word where some people will lose it, um, like in between of just buying a, 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 a solid vehicle versus leasing. Um, so a lot of people who were like up wrong on just straight leasing don't understand. Not saying that's everyone, but there are some people who simply don't understand the point that. Um, they forget that repairing a vehicle is cheaper than buying a new one. No, 100%. So even if your trans falls out of your car, you're spending a couple grand compared to a couple grand down payment and then a lease payment yeah, right. or also, just buying a new car in, in total. Like yeah. You don't need to just scrap your car because you have an issue that's $1,000. Exactly. When you're repairing a car that you own too, you're investing in something. So you're increasing the value of something you own instead of throwing your money at a car you're just going to lose. Right. That's the difference, in my opinion. Now, yeah. that doesn't stop me from leasing something, because right. eventually, yeah, I want to lease something. You want a return on investment. It's, yeah. So the way you look at it is, it, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but the way you look at it, at least, is you're not really getting a return on investment other than the two years that you spend with the car, yeah. right? Like you're obviously getting a return right. on investment as in transportation. Right, or work exactly. Or, yeah. But to you, you have a greater return on investment if I go out and I buy a car and then I, you know, I have to pour money into it. Not pour, but yeah. I have to... You're going to put your money into right, it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, obviously I'm not afraid of fixing up a car. No. You know, I think it just doesn't you know, intrigue someone. Exactly. Some, Some people, people are okay with spending it. four grand more if it means that they don't have to deal with that. And exactly. that's just how it is. Um, but, it, like, I know plenty of people who, when they graduate school, are going to go right to the dealer and lease a car. Just like how I know people just like me who uh, freshman year or between freshman year in college and senior in high school, I went out and spent a couple grand on, uh, uh, you know, a 2006 Toyota 4Runner that has an eight-cylinder engine that are known to go for a long time. And even if it even if it has issues, I'm more than willing to put money into it because that, that money I spent there will be less money overall than I'm going to spend going to a dealer after I graduate, I, fingers crossed, you know, I take what, pretty good care of a vehicle. I just don't see myself graduating and then going to lease a new car from a new dealership um, when yeah. it's physically just cheaper to not. Right. And I am That's not someone who needs to have the new new. I'm not saying that everyone is who lease, but one thing that I have going that, you know, that you kind of need to have if you're going to buy an older vehicle and older as, and that's another thing that people hit you with is what's old. Because some people are literally grow up in a in a place where it's like, this is 2021, right? There are some people who grow up who, if your car's older than 2015, like if your car's not newer than 2015, it's an old car, right? Which is, ugh, yeah, hilarious. I have never understand that. No, it's that's hilarious. Thing, My 2002 Chevy Tahoe, I've upgraded all the creature comforts to the point where it's basically a car that's 2015 or newer. Right, it has a screen in it. I have a screen, I have a stereo system, I have heated seats. 19 years old, but it's like that car's 
perfectly fine. And, yeah, and that's the thing with my point of view, too, is with my car, I'm the type of person I'm going to take that car until the day where I can, I found my next buyout, right? So whether it's a daily driver or it's, you know, a car that I want for a long, long time, um, I'm going to take that Toyota 4 until it dies, right? So until it, until it breaks down on me and it's beyond repair and it's worth less, or it's worth, you know, it's worth more just to scrap it than it is to repair it. Once it hits that point, then I'm okay with, you know, heading over to the dealership or maybe just finding another used car like that for the time being. Um, but I'm not, you won't catch me. You won't catch you. You won't see you. You won't catch you going. Oh, I'm ready. To, I'm ready. I want to. I want to lease just because I want to be in something new. Let me well, try. Not to gonna, sell yeah. This. So no, not, not even just because I want to be in something new, but simply because um, it's an inconvenient time where right. it's like my car breaks down. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to to suffer through that time. Find another reliable vehicle that's just like that one that lasted me ten years or whatever the time. God bless the time is with the car. Um, but just because a car breaks down on me, you know, eight after eight years or whatever after I bought it, doesn't mean that I'm gonna rush to the dealership and get a car because I don't have one. I'm, you know, I'm gonna get an, I'm gonna get a vehicle that I want to be with. I'm not gonna go lease a car I don't want, yeah. just like I'm not gonna go buy a car I don't want. Right. So when I look at it as where I'm spending my money, I'm gonna go get something that I want to be in, whether it means waiting a month or however long. Um, but I just don't see myself personally. Or running into a dealership and saying, "Take my money because um, I need a car," or right. because I some I maybe somewhat kind of like this car. Exactly. But in my personal experience, it'd be nice to own like two cars if you're going to do the buying option. Mm-hmm. Because I've had multiple brake failures in my car to the point where it wasn't drivable, but I yep. had the option to have our '98 Expedition that I could use instead while, while I was fixing it. my yep. brakes. So that's, that's my nice. theory with having a car that you like and you want to drive for fun but if something happens to it you still have your lease too right. and then you don't yeah. have to worry about your lease because you just take it to the dealership and they give you another car to use while Absolutely. it's getting fixed who would, have, who would have known first podcast we're going to spend the first 42 minutes on leasing or buying cars yeah well you know gotta get there somehow right, right. About the full 40 minutes yeah, we can switch it up hey, though well <laughs> talk about something else no i'm just saying i mean you guys yeah full disclaimer completely skeptical over here was like uh are we I, I believe in us. I know that we have a lot of interesting conversations, but to not come up with like a topic prior to recording, no, to not yeah. say like, okay, we're gonna talk about this for today. You know, just kind of get on and we'll see where we go. Right. Didn't know if we could do it. I'm impressed. I'm I figured impressed. we could do it. I had some. I had a little, little bit more confidence but, knowing that, thing, right? So yeah. Because we can shoot the shit for a long time. Oh no, yeah, no doubt. Well, I mean, I mean, what was it? The fucking every Tuesday at least, uh, you'd come into my dorm after. Oh After yeah. After hours Last of studying, of summer. some random topic would spark up. Yeah. Just um, for those of you who don't know, I keep saying last term as if it were a long time ago. Um, it was because uh, Kettering University. For those of you that don't know, uh, people like to call it trimesters, but the best way. Yeah, that's a shitty way. Of yeah, it's out. the best. Or that's the best way to put it in terms of like the school calendars that are out there. But it's yeah. also a really awful way to put it yeah. um we're here for three months and we're off for three months and uh when we're off we're working full-time jobs uh that are known as co-ops in our field um one of our roommates coming down right now what's up oh, oh dell coming through and there yeah, that's is, well, that's andrew for anyone that's yeah. andrew dell our first visitor uh-huh. first guest anyways yeah. um so like i said three months at school three months at a co-op position um you know, and we can we're gonna to touch on that probably a lot more, I would think, yeah. throughout this podcast. But uh no, definitely. just give you guys a little background of where we're at so that you guys don't think I'm crazy by saying Yeah, you know last, it's term, last term, whatever it is. It's, unique form of college. Right. Yeah. It's, it's enjoyable but time goes by fast and it's really hard. Yeah, that's the whole point yeah. I think it is. Yeah. It kinda of weeds out the people who wanna be here and who really don't wanna be here. Well one hundred percent. I think um the whole eleven eleven weeks, right? I mean you talk about in the matter of 11 weeks, you go from the very start of any class, right? So, Calc 2, you have to learn it in 11 weeks. Yeah, and not even 11 weeks because last week's yeah. just final weeks, right? Right, so, so yeah. it's, it's more like, like... nine and a half weeks usually. Exactly, and the thing is, is like, so at, uh, at other universities, you have the thing, you have your first week is syllabus week, right? Yeah. Whereas we maybe have syllabus day. 
or first 30 minutes of your right. first yeah. class. Or they send you an email yeah. a week before and read right, it right, right, starting right. class. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I don't think there was a single class. I had one class I went over the syllabus first day. Every other class was, um, yeah, just my physics lecture was the only one. And then every other one was you were right. learning something the first 10 minutes of class. And that's just they have to keep the schedule. Yeah. They have to maintain pace. Well, I think, right? I think the, and uh, like I said, I think the only reason why I have, why I had like syllabus day the first time was because it was... You know, they all they obviously know who is freshman, who yeah. you know, so they take their time to go kind of introduce you into it. But after that, for the most part, it's it's pedal to the metal. Yeah, because we're taking a class in 10 weeks when normal colleges, you have like nine months a year in school. So like four to four and a half ish months yeah. to do a class. Right. And we're taking 16 to 20 credits while other colleges are like 12, 16, sometimes maybe 20. Yeah. And also, you got to think... Uh, Catering is really screwy with what they value as credits. Right. So yeah. uh, something that you might take at another university for three credits or four credits, um, if you even have a class that's worth four credits at some schools, Kettering may give you one credit for it. So one or two credits for it, depending on exactly what we're talking about. Because, um, you know, it's a school that's f- here that's focused on STEM. Right. You know, so yeah. science, technology, you know, engineering and mathematics. So like even coming in with AP credit or something, they take higher requirements. Yeah. So like if an AP exam's out of five and I got a three for like physics, they don't take it until you get a four when other right. universities usually take a two, maybe three. Well, so... What gets even screwier, 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 whatever. It gets messed it. up more. Right, yeah. So what gets messed up more, <laughs> more messed up. is when you get into IB credits, right? So I, I, I was in the IB program at my high school. and IB standing for? Uh, International Baccalaureate. Yeah, sorry. I guess I should explain that a little bit. Uh, IB is the International Baccalaureate program. Uh, I'm not sure if they have. I Obviously, it's, it's different everywhere. It's different all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a worldwide type deal where essentially your high school diploma if you get your ib degree uh becomes recognized worldwide so it's the easiest way to put it would be ap on steroids so instead of getting to pick like oh i just want ap english and i just want ap math and that's the only ap classes i want because those are the two subjects i'm good at um you can't do that with ib with ib it's either i want all the ib classes or i want no ib classes um, and that's how it was at my school. I know at other schools they do offer kind of like a hybrid so you can get a certification in one area. Yeah. Um, but at mine, I had to take them all. Regardless, our tests were all out of seven points. So instead of the five, ours, ours were out of seven. I think the lowest score that they took was a six. And to get a six on an IB uh, test, not easy. Or no, I shouldn't say test because it's a class. IB is two year, is a two year program, mm-hmm. so your score is based off of not just one test. It's primarily that test, but it's also like two to three papers that you write in that class throughout that two years. So in order to average a six, I mean you're talking busting your yeah balls, busting. busting you're your you're ass. getting you're getting a six on all three aspects, or you're getting you know a seven, a six, and a five. Yeah, if you're lucky. Is, yeah, and you're bust, and nobody gets a seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, schools have their equivalent. Right. Um, but just Kettering is very picky with what they take in as uh, credit and no credit. Yeah. Which is a good thing, but it's also kind of a bad thing. Oh, well, 100%. I mean, so, like I said, I was in the IB program, but I came in here, and I was the definition of an entry-level student. Yes. I mean, yep. lowest math you can take here. Mm-hmm. That was me. Yeah. Uh a lot of kids actually here. Yeah, a lot, lot of kids here. Like, and if you're in entry level math, if you're watching this from Kettering, um, nothing's wrong. With nothing's that. wrong with that. One hundred percent. Because guess what? I'm very glad I'm in Calc one right now. Uh, I do not wish to be in Calc two. I mean, not a lot of schools are you. Uh, think about it. It's our well for us, um, our second semester here, right? And so that means uh, the first semester was our summer term, and he was in pre Calc. Mm-hmm. And this term right now, so his following school term, very next up, he's in Calc 1, and he's going to finish that at the end of March. And then the following one, he'll probably be in Calc 2, and then the next right. one, Calc 3, and it's just back to back to back. So really, you're getting through pre-Calc through Calc 3 in two years instead exactly. of, you know, the. and it's not even two years. It's technically one year. Yeah, it's one year. The amount of, it's basically like doing a Calc per two and a half three months yeah right so yeah. in a full year it basically in a full years worth of time you've completed four calculus courses worth of material which is insane to think about i mean literally mental it's it's mental 
Mm. I mean, I took uh, AP calculus in high school for uh, the literally it spanned from day one of senior year to the last day of my senior year. And that was just to cover the AB section and the BC right. section of Calculus 1. And I placed into Calc 2 and Calc 3 here in my placement test. Mm -hmm. Still took Calc 1 again, just because I looked at it as, well, my Calc 2 class is now going to be 9 and a half, 11 weeks. And I just want to make sure I'm prepared for this. So I went back and took Calc 1 again when I got here instead of jumping into Calc 2. And I did the extreme version of that, and I went all the way back to pre-Calc. Right. Even though I did the same class as you, I went all the way back. Right. I don't really regret it because it did set me up and help me a bit, but the pre-calc doesn't count for credit, right? No, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's in, so speaking on that is I took, um, I took a two year course of IB, um, SL math, which is essentially pre-calc and calc one mixed into one class, uh, taught in a different sort of, uh, direction. Uh, but, at the basis of it, it's pre-calc and some calc one stuff. Um, and when I took my, you know, placement test, I kind of blew it. I won't lie. I kind of blew it off and uh, wasn't really paying the most attention to it. Ended up scoring like one point off of calc one. And they were like, oh, you're in pre-calc. And I was like, kind of went, I was like, oh, well, you know, that's kind of, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to really start in pre-calc because I know I'm solid on all my pre-calc stuff. It was more of the calc one that I wanted to learn. So I was like, well, can't you just put me in Calc 1? I'm like a point away. I'm like, sorry, no, like we don't, we don't do that. You can retake the test um, because it's still open and you haven't used any of your retakes because I believe you took, you got like three tries to do it. Something like that. Yeah. But um, I think it was yeah two or three. Yeah. So they actually suggested to me, they're like, oh, just, you know, take pre-calc, build up your GPA. And then that way, you know, you're, you're off to a good start. So I do that. With the understanding that if I get, what is it, 3 5, yep. you're able to take 20 credits. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have to have three terms that are 20 credits in order to graduate on time. Yeah. Uh, normally, yeah. Right, yeah. So Some, it might be more than that, actually. Right. Yeah. So the typical class load here is 16 credits, right? That's like. Or that's the lowest roughly. you can do. Right. So, so 16 to 20 be a full -time is, is, te is your full time student range, right? Yes. 16 classes is four, or 16 credits is four classes. Your 3-5 GPA thing only applies to freshmen, I believe. Okay. Because you have to it take only applies credits to freshmen. No okay. Yeah, so eventually. But regardless, so that was so that was 3-5 yes. for freshmen, right? Yep. So I get almost a four point mm -hmm. and then I go to apply for a 20th credit and it wasn't anything hard. It's it, you know, it was a basic business class that I was told will count towards my minor. And when I went to apply for it, they were like, "Oh no, you took pre-calc. Like we don't allow 20 20 credits to pre-calc students and you know i ended up long long and short of it i ended up getting the class but yeah they weren't gonna let me if i didn't send out another email and go through the whole process just because you know they want you to be solid before you take on too much yeah because they don't want you to drop because you know highest dropout rate is like what i think it's 51 here. sophomore right. junior year so junior one yeah sophomore yeah. or something and it's it's a pretty high percentage. Too. So they want you to start off good, so that you're not going to be heading towards that that cut yeah. soon. Right, but i and you know that's all up for debate whether they do it out of the goodness out of, of their hearts or whether it's it looks better when more, it looks better when more, more kids of a money are passing. Grab. Yeah. I mean that like I said, all up for debate. You know, you like to think that they are looking out for you, that they are looking out for you. Usually they are. Usually they are. Yeah, no, no. I definitely there's I, always times to to question. Right. No, I always in my experience, I think they genuinely were looking out for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do also think that, uh, you know, that could, that could definitely happen and it could be a money grab, oh, but absolutely. that's, that's looking at it from a critical point of view and how you view the economics of college. And yeah. Everything. And even look at it as in, um, like, like, let's say you were to do better on your placement exam could have taken, like, like, just say like my example, I could have jumped into Calc two or three if I wanted to. Right. Didn't. So now I'm looking at um, taking Calc 1 again, which I did last term. Mm -hmm. uh, got the four credits for it, right? But if you would have taken Calc 2, they would have just given me the four credits. I don't know if you do the math on college education, but four credits, that's one full course I wouldn't have to pay for. So the more credits you have that class you didn't have to take, technically the better standing you are financially, uh, just better advantage. It might be harder on you because you're not taking as many 
prerequisites. Right. But when you're looking at it as in, I want to spend the least amount of money here and get still get my degree, should I have taken Calc 1 again? Probably not. But at the same time, I felt that it was worth that financial investment to not be completely stuck in dog water right. in mud in the but mud in Calc 2. I actually, I want to comment on this real quick because it's nice here at our school. I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but we do bracket pricing here. So you just said like your extra class that might that's going to cost you financially. Mm-hmm. The nice thing is that here it won't, right? So the difference between 16 credits and 20 credits is zero dollars because you're in that window. You're a full time student. I wasn't in that window. Oh, uh, because that's right. You were not technically. I got screwed up my schedule. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, and it's also uh, yeah, the bracket thing is true, but it also yeah, exactly. 16 and 20 are both a full time student, right? So they either way didn't matter. But it was just the idea of. Um, I already was missing that bracket, right. so I was okay. like, so now I'm sitting here taking a course. Now I'm also still missing the bracket while taking this course. Makes more sense. Sucked anyway. Well, but that's going to mess up the audio. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, as I was saying, if if you were in that window, if you did have one more simple uh, elective, had you had IME or ME mm-hmm. last term, I mean, now you're talking, well, it's really not going to cost you no. any more money because you, we have that bracket pricing yeah exactly because basically what Noah is trying to explain is that if you um, are like me and not because of my scheduling error I had a uh, 13 credit term last for my first <laughs> yeah. term which kind of sucked um, instead of what was it 17 for incoming freshmen because yeah. we had 17. that seminar yep 17 so I would have been in that bracket because I didn't get that class I was out of the bracket um, didn't pay that bracket price but the only thing that sucks about it, um, so what would have been the advantage for me going forward is that because I'm only four credits behind, that means, well, it sucks because now I have to take an extra 20 credit term, right? which does kind of suck. Um, or if, you know, you could take credits off term. So like during work term, you have the option to take up to like eight credits worth. And you can do that like it's, once or twice. Uh, I believe it's, you get three, three full credit transfers. And so 12 credits total get to transfer in. For you know, for free, so you have to pay whatever. I'm not even talking about like you can oh, as a cat. You can take catering court. You take them out. So like you can. Oh, okay, okay. And that's for, for everyone. You can take uh, like four, like two courses or one course or something from catering, like during B section or while you're at, at work. Um, it's called taking courses out. Right, but I'm saying how many? Do you know the price on that? Um, you still pay the price on. It, oh, okay. But you okay. Still, I'm saying is if you, I'm saying that was a alter, like another option, right? Instead of taking an extra twenty credit. Um, but so since the thing that is like what I'm saying is because I got screwed in my scheduling freshman one term, <laughs> my first freshman term, uh, now I have to pay an extra. I have to do an extra twenty. Right. The difference between me doing an extra twenty credit and just being on pace is zero because of that bracket pricing. Right. So whereas, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Whereas you go to a school like MSU, you have, you know, main... You're, you're paying the price for credit. M- yeah, most most schools. I don't want to single out MSU or U of M. And we could be wrong. Right, and we definitely could be wrong. Definitely, I'm just speaking, you know, shooting from the hip here, but... Shoot Noah, shoot Noah if he's wrong. Don't shoot me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. come at me, cancel me. Uh, I'll drop his Snapchat. I believe that... At most schools, you are charged per credit. So if you add on, you know, even if you're in your, and you know, other schools, it's not 16 credits is in a full time student, you know, because crediting is different yeah. wherever you're at. But uh, if you're in the bracket of full time student, it doesn't matter because they are going to charge you if you have, on our scale, if you had 16 and 18, well, they would charge you more for the 18, even though, you know, you're still technically a full time student. It's just the difference of how how is the bill written. Yeah. At the end of the day, you'll probably still spend the same amount of money, though. It's right. just per semester, it's different. No, no, no. It's, it's at the end of, well, dollar-wise, right, right, right. you got to keep your grants and scholarships, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, here it's nice because they are nice with the merit scholarships. And, and well, they'll lock in your price. Yeah. Like most schools, 99% of universities lock in your price. Right. So but, it usually uh, never goes up, but the, it can change. That's actually the cool thing about ours is that although you are, like, locked into your price... You're only gonna make more money at your co-op while you're here. Yeah. Yes. So you know. Hopefully, if you're not jumping between. Yeah, hopefully. Co-ops. Hopefully, that's the goal. Yeah, that's cool. That's the goal. So it doesn't happen for everyone, but. No, definitely not. Some people don't even have co-ops for the first couple of years, but. That's very true. Yes. Um, 
And the other nice thing is you talked about how you can take classes while you're on your work term. Yes. Uh, what I didn't know until last term when I actually talked with my advisor, I can go to Macomb on my B section. I can find a class that is equivalent to one of my classes here, yes. take it at Macomb, and transfer it in. I believe I can do that for a total of 12, 8 or 12 credits, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. obviously I'm going to guess, just guessing here, I think it's going to be cheaper to do – my Macomb class than it would be to do a Kettering sub out class and taking credits out. It's not only about being cheaper though. It'll also help you with less 20 credit terms. And right. Well, 100%. Point. But I, I think for me, cause I'm going with a major and two minors. Yeah. I think if I didn't do that, even if I had all 20 credit terms, mm-hmm. I don't think it would be possible to get out of here in the four and a half years that they have the timeline set up for. Yeah. So, yeah, no, the timeline's very... Very strict. Yes. All right. But not unpo- impossible. Impossible. Because mm-hmm. we are a four-and-a-half-year school, but you can take an extra term if you want. Right. Some people choose to do that. Instead of doing a bunch of 20-credit turns, you can do, like, an extra semester. Well, I was thinking about that. But um, it would cost more money. It would cost more money, and the faster you get out, the more competitive you are for a job. Right. So Well, yeah. the other thing is that I would hope if you are going to take a fifth year... I would hope by then, the best case scenario for that, if you're going to take a, make it a full five years and not four and a half, would be that you're fully employed by your co-op. In by that year. Time. Yeah, yeah, in that you're year. You're locked in. So um, she's not in her fifth year, but my business partner, mm-hmm. uh, my sorry, my partner in my business class right. uh, is fully employed right now. But she's in her four and a half year term. So she's not on campus simply because she's at work every day. But yet she's while handling her last while while also handling her last term. So, I mean, I think that's pretty cool that that's that's not like it's impossible. Like, that's definitely a big possibility for anybody. Yeah, no, it's definitely I've it's not crazy uncommon. One of the guys I work with um, graduated years back. uh, When I think he graduated Kettering while we were in high school, but he actually was working Full time, I think, for his entire senior year while he was at Kettering, he was um, fully employed. But I could be slightly off on the like the time span, but it, I'm pretty sure that was it. Um, so, and the the benefit is one of my my company has a location in the area of the school as well as the area where uh, we work now. Mm-hmm. Um, so while that that deal was on, is that he got to work at the location near the university, uh, you know, and got full time while finishing up a senior year so that was cool yeah no i think that's uh i mean i think that's got to be a cool opportunity for anybody i mean a lot of work in three months for sure but worth yeah. it i would i would have and to hopefully imagine. senior year you have everything figured out right so you're kind of used to that like think about your senior year in high school i know it's different i know it's different uh don't come at me but i'm just saying in comparison think about your freshman year in high school compared to your senior year oh, right you're, you're just walking you're walking through this bull you're ready to go you're ready to get out of there you know, I know I'm freshman right now speaking on my butt, but we all were seniors in high school at some right. point, and we know uh, that... Senioritis, it's real. It's real, and also the fact is you know what you're about, as some... That's a great quote, by the way. <laughs> well, I know what I'm about, son. Ron Swanson. Oh, you're right. So to let them guess <laughs> it. We don't need to give it to them. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. What? I mean, that that should be a poll. That should be how we start one of these, is take a poll of who's funny or what, who was the two... Was it Ron's? Oh, uh, someone. Ron yeah. Hensley? Yeah. It's, it no, was, oh, well, that was that was one. I figured we had made one that was a lot harder than that. Besides, maybe it was Ron Swanson and Michael Scott. Maybe it was. It was something like that. Yeah, but it was uh, two. two there was TV. another one. Yeah. Yeah. But Ron and Leslie, I, I, I don't really think it's much of a comparison. Not really, no. Some people say that it is. No, it's not even agree. close. I'm, yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave, leave it. it. But <laughs> one is far superior than that. Definitely. Though. Definitely. Yeah. No, well, that's crazy. That's bonkers. That would be insane. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm that, looking at my. Uh, that'd be some good clickbait. You want to you want to announce what which one's far superior in your? Uh, how this one ever came up? Uh, we, we just leave wait, it. Well, we, we can leave it, it, but um, yeah. No, we're good. Uh, I'm having my deg- my uh, Kettering degree works pulled up right now, and it's, like we said. 100 it's a hundred why did we didn't say this yet but it's 161 credits to require or to graduate that's nuts so think about so 161 right and how many how many terms do we have here eight nine 
nine, nine school terms. Nine school terms. Right, because two a year, then the half. Yep. So, so yep. it's nine school terms divided. So what is that? That's 18. 18. 18 exactly. So, 70. so you're taking 16 and a couple of handful with 20s. Right. Yeah. So it's like five five or six 16s, and then the rest are 20s. And that's that's if you don't miss credits. Miss credits. That's Fail if you class. don't. Drop a class. It's also class. if you don't bring any credits. Right. Or bring in any credits. Well, and even, even if you bring in credits, so that's, I guess that's my question then is, so if you, had you started at Calc 3, right? Let's say you mm-hmm. started all the way at Calc 3. Yeah. Math goes after Calc 4, you have. Well, it depends on what well, major you are. Yeah, okay. Calc 4 isn't really a thing. Calc okay. 4 is not really. So, so it's Calc, Calc 3 just, and then it's, it's just Diffie Q, usually, right? Diffie Q. Uh, How many be, Diffie Qs are there? One. One. There's so then, are you? Equations. And the rest of the math is major based. It's okay. Yeah. So that and so even, that's my question. Even dependent in rare cases, you don't have to take the FEQ. I be, I could be completely I think wrong. CS majors don't have to. I could be. Let me yeah, check my. Let me check my my thing. I have my plan right here. Actually, I'm literally just going to switch over to it. But I guess I, could, I think I have the choice between FEQ and another class. Well, I could be speaking on my butt though. I, I guess that's my question then. So, let's say, you know, I take me personally. I'm going to get through Calc 3 by the end of next year, mm-hmm. and then I'll take Diffie Q my well, what, senior or er, junior year one will be Diffie Q, right? If I sure Calc 1 right now because I'm in Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3 will be next year. Yep, junior one term. So yep. my first term as a junior will be Diffie Q. Yes, okay. So now that is also the same track I'm on, right? Okay, but now let's say. Someone like Ethan, who started at Calc, what did he start? Two. Calc, two. Calc two. He's so in he, Calc three with me right now. Oh, he's in Calc lower. two. He's in Calc three right now. With oh, me. yeah. So but he's a year lower. So he goes Calc two, Calc three. He goes Diffie Q as a sophomore one. sophomore one, mm-hmm. and then from there it's just all major based math. So, uh, so, so look at so numbers. listen to this. So my, mine, look, mine looks a tad different, I believe, because I am an industrial engineer major compared to everyone else who's mm-hmm. normally mechanical engineer, and then electrical and chemical. Chemical is not really as common either. Right. Um, so I came in, did I took Calc 1 as a freshman 1, and I took Calc 2 as a freshman 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, next term I'm looking at, along with uh, Econ, IME 211, and IME 200 at the same time. Um, now I have uh, Calc 3 which is, yeah, 203, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, Calc 3. And then I have prob stats in the same term. All right, yeah. So my next term, I have a 20 as a sophomore one, and it's a with two IME courses for my major and then two math courses and econ. Following term, I have math 204. That's DPQ. Or I have uh, math 307. Right. Well, it says, it says math 204 undefined math 307 next to it. I don't know what math 307 is. Where am I going to do it? Is, is that, that matrix? matrix? Uh, I'm not sure what you take as an IE. Yeah, neither do I. Is, I, I is there a way to look up uh, what courses are for your number? Because usually when you hover over it in degree works, it tells you. But for this section, it doesn't It doesn't show me. So where, where are you going to see this? Hold on. Um, just go to your uh, degree works. <laughs> Here right now. Go to plans. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just be there. It'll be there. Okay. So you guys should be through. Uh, uh, where'd I go? Where'd I go? You guys should be through two hundred four. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's. I'm my not idea. sure if you have to take prop stats. I think you do. Fine. Yeah, I think it goes for us. It's uh, Diffie Q, then Nums, then prop stats. So here's here's what looks. I, could be I don't have to take Nums. I don't here's think. what looks Unless Nums is three hundred seven. Absolutely, like not like a bad insane. Like this looks pretty sweet to me. Is that what is this my junior year right here? Um, let's see. Next year will be twenty one, twenty two. Dude, so look at this. They have me taking Fizz one and Fizz two at the same time. So that's obviously not. Oh yeah. no, that's a lab. That's a no, lab. No, that's a lab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry guys. My my yeah. Fizz my that's Fizz two. So. Anthony, my Fizz two is until junior one. Really? Yeah. But I I'm guess... taking it right now. So. Makes sense. Yeah, but you're also I'm might be I'll be done with prob stats before you can take it. Yeah, but I'm also not me, so right, I exactly. have to take it. Yeah. So math three oh five and math two fifty eight, probability and statistics and then numer- numerical methods and Nums. What number is that? Uh so I have math three oh five and math two fifty eight. So three oh five is nums? Yeah. So I don't have to take nums at all. Yeah. So uh, 
Am I able to take two math terms in one because they don't correlate at all? I or? believe that's so. What I'm yeah. doing. Oh, that's, that's what my, yeah, plan, that's what my like plan says as well. I have, I have Calc 3 and Prob stats at the same time next term. But what gets crazy to me is you said junior year is the biggest dropout year, right? Junior yeah. 1 usually. Yeah, I think by the time you're a junior, yeah. Right? Or so, transfer. 21, 22. Oh, okay. So I'm, never mind. I'm tripping. I'm looking at my senior year. Senior year Do looks need- like... Absolute cake. I don't know because they're all electives you haven't picked yet. Right. Yeah, that but that's, are all that's what I'm saying. Classes. So are like electives at that point, will they get tougher or is that where my... They're not your high school elective. Right. Well, I get Nothing's that. Nothing's fun about them. No, no, I get that. But I'm saying do at that point, do I get to put my all my business classes, do those count as electives? Well, you have to... So if you go back to your worksheets, worksheets. instead of plans, the tab... Mm-hmm. You can scroll down to um, education requirements. Okay. There's, there's gen eds, and then there's major in whatever your major is. Okay, let's see. So, so you have to check all those boxes. Wow. That's a yeah. lot. This is a lot of boxes, people. So my you are a freshman, too. So, yeah, so I, well, I, have I, to take, I have to take for an industrial engineering major, right? I have chem done. I have phys one done. I need to take phys two, and then I need to take either biology, chem, math, physics. So, so basically, I'm taking another math elective because I like math more than phys science. Um, and then I have IME and MEC right now. And then after that, I have to take my MEC 200 class, last MEC I have to take. Statics. Yep, statics. And then after that, I have to take um, either uh, a CS or an ECE or an IME 211. So I'm taking IME 211 instead. And then after that, I go IME 200, IME 300, 300, 300, 400, 400, 400, 400. So basically, and then to get that same major, I still need to take, uh, I take math. Oh, perfect. Right here, it tells you. So I have Calc 1, mm-hmm. Calc 2, right. and I need, to take, I need to take Calc 3. Um, and then I'll have to take Diffy Q or 307, which is matrix algebra. So I get to skip Diffy Q and get take, just take matrix if I want. So... Mm-hmm. Um, you might catch me in Matrix and not in DiffyQ. So some people say that Calc three was harder than DiffyQ, though. I heard that Calc three is everything in Calc two, but in three dimensions. That I think sucks. so. Two it guys, two guys in my work, right two guys in my work have, have fun. Two guys in my work have very strong, excuse me, opinions. One of them could never get Calc three and thought DiffyQ was easy as hell. Other person thought that Calc three was just like Calc two and in one, but DiffyQ was like hard class. So what yeah. what do you learn in DiffyQ then? I think DiffyQ is just uh, it uses a lot of integrals, I believe. Okay. I think it's just so math that you've already learned, but yes. now applied differently. Yeah, I okay. think it's applying math in different ways and then finding Differential ways to equations. make it like useful in the real world. DiffyQ, but not really. Yeah. Well, Differential well, equations. Yeah. Yeah. It's equations that will help you further on, but it's using math you already know. I can just tell you. I can click on the... There's a hyperlink. It'll tell you. An introduction to the principles and methods for solving first-order, first-degree differential equations and higher-order linear differential equations it includes a study of La- Laplace or Laplace. I could be transferred like... It's just a math technique. Yep. Laplace transform and its application to the solution of Diffie-Q differential equations. Um, existence and uniqueness theorems for ODEs... Uh, are also discussed so it's just a higher level math course yeah, compared it's just to just applying math you already learned and like and so you guys don't have the option you have to take that yeah. yes okay you so. know what's uh really daunting what? um looking at this plan that little bar at the very bottom of your worksheets that says thesis yeah easy for me i don't want to like flex really well hard, no but. no no but all right so easy in the sense that it's lined up for me it's already l- it's lined up right i just have to execute but Lots of legwork still on your part oh, to be done. Oh, I'm not right. saying it's easy. No, no, no. I'm not saying, I'm saying, but I'm just saying, like, as in, like, I'm worried about it still, obviously. It's right. still a lot of work. But, like, I guess I should be, instead of saying the word easy, like a like, like condescending mm-hmm. asshole, I should say um, very grateful in the fact that I have a, a, just a foot in the water already right. on it. Yeah. Well, and like, the, in my situation, I've been through two co-ops, and I'm looking for a third now. I'm kind of screwed in that sense because I still have to find the co-op, that you get comfortable, well, find my job, and then start my thesis. You, you are and you aren't, right? I mean, yeah. so you're you're screwed in the fact that, like, oh, I don't really know where I'm going to land. Yeah. But hopefully you're going to land at a company where they're, you know, they've been through the ringer with having a co-op, and yep. now they're, like, all ready to go. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's the hope. But uh, you know. yeah, so like, um, wishing this hand. And... Never mind. Okay. 
uh, <laughs> by kid at my work by uh, age sophomore one by or I guess this term sophomore two because you're a sophomore two right yeah so by t- age sophomore two by credit junior one junior two whatever in there mm-hmm. um, so at that age of sophomore one because right. uh, he was a sophomore one by cre- or by st- like by age by standing uh, no, no sophomore no. two by credit no he's a junior one by credit back then. Oh, back so then. Back during my work term, because we haven't started right. this term yet. Okay. So he's a sophomore two, but junior two by credit. Excuse me. Somewhere he's Sorry. junior one or junior two by credit. I forget because oh, okay. like the, the the threshold, if you look it up, there's like it's like fifty or something, right, okay. between them, um, fifty credits. Either way, all I'm saying is, by the time of age, he was a sophomore one by, you know, by age. Um, he sat down and had his meeting with my company for his thesis project. All right, so they're they're getting the the like he's planning already his funding and what's going to happen you know everything that's going down. That's what's up. Um, so hopefully that's the idea. So look wait so, so what I just told you guys about DiffEQ, mm-hmm. here's matrix algebra. Ready? Yeah. A study of matrix concepts including such topics as basic algebraic operations, determinants, inversion, solution of systems of linear equations, vector spaces, bases of dimension, uh, Asian values, and Asian vectors. So I don't I, even know what Asian means, no, but it either. sounds way better than what yeah. it sounds way better than well, I couldn't I can take DiffyQ if I want to. Well, yeah. Do I want to? You, no. No. Here's here's the thing. That right there, that sentence right there explaining what that class was, I think may be the reason why in the A B when you're walking you see all those signs that say top ten happiest jobs and it says industrial engineering. Ninth place. Yeah. Ninth, just ninth because place. I take these classes. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Well no, I think well, it's, I was it's, just it's saying, supposed to be in the workplace, not in the right, school. No, it, but, yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, yeah I, you I, get I what agree. I'm saying? Yes, it's a joke. You get it. Um Yeah, and then I, I take then I have to take prob stats as well. Do you guys have to take prob stats? I believe so, yes. <laughs> no one can see it. Prob stats. Let's see. Here. It's it's math two fifty eight. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. I'm taking it. Do you even have to take matrix? No. What's what? I think you can take it as an elective, so we don't have to math take 307. it. Math three oh seven. Three oh seven. I'm not seeing here. No. So what you I should have do? To take it. I use in What I should do? Well, actually, it's a mandatory math credit. It's not like it's a math. Right. It's not. It's because you there's electives where it has to be like a certain level math mm-hmm. course, math mm-hmm. or science course. Yeah. I was gonna say maybe I can line it up for my year or whatever, but right. I can't because it's um, it's a mandatory. Well, the thing is. Like looking at it right now, academic year 22, 23, this should be you as well. Uh, you might be the year prior to, but do you have the biology or chem or math or physics, like a credit there, and it's just not filled in. Where are the free electives at the bottom? Yeah. 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 yeah it all just the electives says, are... It just says free elective uh, math 100. No, oh. Except math says, 100. Oh, except math 100? Yeah. See, mine says this. Mine says biology. Or chemistry, or math, or physics. And Where are you looking at? Now? Right here. Oh, I was on the worksheet. Oh, so, yeah, no, no, no. Look um, on your plans. But um, Rachel's so that one. What's nice about that is that is the one credit I got from uh, IB. Is I scored a, I scored a six on my biology because I took biology for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, couldn't repeat to you anything that I learned. One hundred percent. Um, which is I was really good with like. Are you a biology major though? No, that's exactly, exactly my point. But exactly. But it's like can chemo- you transfer chemistry the freshman year. Yeah, no, so that's what I'm saying. Is I barely got it, but now the thing is is that it hasn't transferred in yet, so now I have to figure out how to do that. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. To be I just think to figure out eventually. I don't know about you guys. So if if you're a normal like Anthony, you're no you went to pre calc first. So yeah. and Ethan's ahead. So we don't really have an ME that jumped in on the base in this house. Because Henry no oh, actually Henry did. Jumped Henry's in Henry's the only ME that jumped in on schedule and math in this house. What do you jump in it? Got one. That's yeah. what you jump in it. I'm an IE. I want to ask Matt's, you. Oh, okay. I want to look at your schedule and say, what term would you be done with math by? Oh, I can tell you, and then we can just subtract one for Henry. Right. right. Well, depending on his scheduling, but yes. Yes. Um, More or less. So that looks like my last scheduled math class is, let's see here. So this 20, it is junior two is my last math class, um, but that's with the expectation that i take two math classes in one term in one term which so, possible but also i could bump out a math class put an elective there 
you know, move it on one more, and then move it down one more, which but is should. possible. But do you, you want know, to do that? Even with being at Kettering, bumping on a math class and taking a different class, it's still you're still gonna get no, 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 it's, it's still gonna, it's still gonna be a lot. I mean, yeah. but the only re- the only way the only reason I say that is that they actually have me scheduled for two math classes in yeah. a twenty credit term. Yep. So like surprise, twenty surprise. credits. Well, yeah, twenty credits in itself is a lot. So when we get to senior year and you start picking electives, ME's mm-hmm. prone to taking IME courses above 200, above 300, mm-hmm. you're going to love to be my friend that year. You're going to love to. Because guess what? By the end of sophomore two, I'll be done with IME 200, 211, 361, and 351. That, that would be really nice if I wasn't a business-headed guy and... Already no, but you you have you have to take the mass credit. You know what I'm saying? You have what? you have to take you have to like look at your worksheet. That's right. what I'm saying. You you if you scroll down to the mm-hmm. bottom of your worksheet uh-huh. in the mechanical engineering major section, um, there's gonna see, be a thing that says electives or whatever, and it's gonna tell you straight up you're gonna have to take a 200 or a 300 higher in IME or MAC. Where are we at? So under the section that was ME. Mm-hmm. Where are you? Right here. Mechanical engineering program. So like I was saying, underneath your elective things, because if you look at the other, you're not going to want to take some of those other courses. You're going to want to take IME instead. It's just... That business the, that business 303 class is looking real nice right there. Does it, where does it say I don't have business option? Well, he's taking business minors. I'm taking so. business. Oh. I'm taking two. That's what I was trying to say. Is I'm taking... Yeah. So in the time that I'm going to be done here, in theory, yeah, probably is not going to happen, right? But knocking on wood and you know, hoping for the best... Assuming that I take, I believe it's two classes on a work on work terms, yeah, and transfer them in, or you know, take them out as credits from catering themselves. Mm-hmm. I will walk out of here with one major in mechanical engineering, so a bachelor's in mechanical engineering, a minor in business, just like it's just called business, yep. and then a minor in uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. Entrepreneurship. It's if you're gonna call me out for saying intra instead of entra, it's intra. Oh, I lied. Entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's entrepreneurship. Well, no, well, so. so video. Ah, cool. Your video cut. Uh, right. Video at one fourteen. Hey, well, I'll keep on audio wise though. Did yeah. you start it back up? I guess I could. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And there we'll just have a black screen or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys, technical difficulties. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, you know. Yeah. But no, so that whole class that I'm taking, that business 304, or, th- yeah, 304 class that I'm taking this term. Can we start it like- yeah, we yeah. are. So we're, it's, we didn't miss anything. We're an hour and 22 in. Right, so we missed a couple minutes. Right. So you just stopped it and restarted it? Huh? Oh, okay, no, I know what you mean. It just you mean. wasn't recording when I went over Okay, there. okay. But, um... So that business three or four class, first day. What's the difference between entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship? I I learned it in my business management class. Um, the difference is basically one is within a company and one is outside of a company. So entrepreneurship, you're on your own. Yeah. You're more, you're a little more creative. Mm. Entrepreneurship, you know, you're, you're creating your own space. You're kinda. you're creating, but you know, within certain parameters. Yeah, and it's for it's for already, a, it's a company, cause that's already made right? Out. So. You know, but anyways, I mean, I glad it's entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and not entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I don't want to, don't want to flex or anything, but your boy's done with math uh, before junior year. Yeah, you're still gonna have some of the most math for any sales rep out there. <laughs> hey, so the joke uh, with that hey. is that his co-op, he's a. His title, sales rep and nope. customer service. Nothing nope. to do with sales. Nope. Here's, nope. Nope. Here's why it gets twisted. It's because it has nothing okay. to do with sales. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Let me, let me put it this way. Dom, I believe your t- official title is... Technical support. Technical support, Team. right? Okay. okay. Member. We joke Team with member. We <laughs> joke with Dom that he is a sales rep because he does have customer interaction every day on the phones. I believe that's about as much as I can say, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I'll 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 decide. Like, I'll say right now, and I'll say how much I think I want to let out. Right. But, um, basically, like I said, technical support team member um, is really just a title that yeah. because right. because there's like a nostalgia or whatever around um, technical support. Uh, that's where you know the jokes come in, which is I understand. I play along with it. It really doesn't. It's just. Um, it's just a title that you know kind of masks the amount of work that we actually do. Right. No, it's it's all fun. And, and they games. also they, they throw in the sales rep thing because on a day to day basis, when you work with uh, customers, technical support wise for you know um, anything between hardware, firmware, and software, you're gonna also gonna run into customers that are looking to make you know exchanges or purchases and whatever. Uh, and as technical support, you do interact with inside and outside sales at your at your company too. Um, you know, make those, make that happen and, you know, do good things for your company and for your customer. So that, at that point, that's when, you know, you get, you know, get the, the nickname or you throw right. in that you're a, you're a technical support and a sales rep at the same time when you're studying engineering, but really at the same time while you're, you're selling engineering and you're, you know, being a support member about and en- stuff, like it's engineering topics. So I will say, um, Yes, 100%. We just give them crap, uh, so nothing is personal here. Uh, but Dom definitely has the coolest job out of all of us, hands down. Yeah. A quality quality job is uh, uh, probably the yes, absolutely. Dom's employer, if you're out there and you're looking for another, I swear to you I'm so much better than Dom is. Maybe Are just you not. pitching yourself? I'm pitching He's myself pitching on a live podcast. right now. Podcast. The kid with the backwards hat is pitching yeah. himself. So, you right here. Lion shirt on and he, a did, You heard him. Hat. Don't okay. worry. No, I'm not worried because he already said on the podcast live he talked about a business minor, so I'm straight. <laughs> chilling. Chilling. No, but seriously, a job like that is the whole, not a job like that, a job that that can lead to in your company Yeah, is the whole reason why I'm here at this school. Yes. Such a backward statement to say that you're here at an engineering school to have, uh, eventually end up in somewhat of a sales position or a business-minded position. Somewhere where you get uh, you know, compensated for revenue that you create. Right. Well, but That's just the goal in general. Well, yeah, the goal in general is to work on, I think, for a lot of people who like to be able to say, I earn that much because of X, Y, and Z, I think commission is what a lot of people want. Yeah. Whereas other whereas other ways there's a good amount of people that don't. There's like yeah, one hundred percent. Uh I grew up and my dad works on commission, so I'm like, hey, that seems sweet. Whereas my dad's like, you know, no, absolutely not. If you can go get an engineering job where you can design things and you can have benefits and right. you can work for a company, you go do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like my goal is to have a job that's reliable. Right. It happens, I have all my security, mm-hmm. I have insurance, I have everything, and I can go home after the day and say I had a good days of work. Now I can enjoy the rest of the day and focus on my home life. One hundred percent, and nothing's wrong with that. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's the path that you lead. But mm-hmm. and I've said it once. I'll say it a thousand times. I'll say it every day. Ethan Van Colley is the reason I'm here at the school. People like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, another inside joke we have. Uh, Ethan, I think it's safe to say he's probably by far the smartest. On intellectually, he, it, he probably has the highest IQ. Highest IQ out of, of the six of us. Yes. yes. But. Can he communicate that? Can he communicate that idea all the time? Probably. Never. So he's same time he's. Oh, the I smart. wouldn't say never. Same, same time, time he's, he's the, the smartest. smartest. He's the smartest um, kid in the house. He's the second worst at explaining his ideas in school's terms. Yes. Who's first? Um. He's gonna say me. No, not no. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. You I just feel like I feel like Ethan's bad. Right. I feel like Ethan's no. bad, but like. One hundred percent. I feel. I just yeah. feel like Ethan's bad, but I feel like. Like Henry or Andrew probably beat him for the explaining well, his thing. Andrew's Andrew really good, Andrew's Andrew's good at explaining stuff, stuff but, but like when it comes to math, he doesn't really know it yet. So it's just like it's hard for him to explain. He's the opposite end of the spectrum of Ethan. Yeah. Well, no, I, the thing is, he's the blossoming guess. flower. Ethan's a flower, but doesn't know how to get the water. Here, here's the yeah. thing. Here's the thing is that Andrew, when he knows what he's doing, is great so at great, at, amazing at explaining. Yeah. I sat there in Andrew's room, and we did our Mac 100 final from 10 o'clock to 1 a.m. And I, I can honestly tell you, I don't think that I really appreciated NX as much as I did within those three hours. Because oh, yeah. I was using certain commands, and he was, you know, NX, anybody, everybody knows, a thousand different ways to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why I love NX. Right. Well, I love NX, too. Right? But when you're sitting... I don't like CAD. Oh, my God. You just started using CAD this year, so... That's Cam. Nice. Huh? 
I'll be using Cam more than Cad that's, anyway. That's yeah. Nice. But uh, so Andrew, very good at Cad, right? Yes. yes. He's pretty great at it. He can explain it to you in layman's terms like nobody else, right? Because mm-hmm. when I sit with Ethan, Ethan is very. Well, that's just how it happens, yeah, right? Just do it. Just, just do work it, out. Right? He's blunt. When less, s- less. Uh, right. He's like half the professors at the school. Exactly. When, yeah. Well, ninety <laughs> percent. I haven't had too many issues with professors. We're we're also, you're also. Classes. Yeah, we haven't got past once we once we step right. up, it's going to get a little that, bit worse. That's true. But, and then Henry, there is no explanation. It's this. Oh, here, do this, do this, do that. Right. There's yeah. No Henry doesn't explain. He just says do it. Right. Well, yes and no, because when I was, I, I struggled with X. All, all of oh, I still struggle because I, I this was You're my right, first time. Seven weeks ago was my first time. Not even four weeks ago was the first time I opened a, well, a CAD software on my computer. So. so when I did it, I worked with, I believe it was not SolidWorks, but it was another like smaller one I did in high school. I only did it for one year. AutoCAD? In, Inventor. It was Inventor. Inventor okay. That's what it was. So I did Inventor for one year. Wasn't great at it, but I loved it. That's part of the reason why I'm here is because I love that class. Mm-hmm. When I came here to NX, I was, you know, like it's like riding a bike. You don't really forget how to work a 3D software like that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when you have something that's so much more complex, you have to appreciate it a little differently. Mm-hmm. So I didn't appreciate it differently. I wanted to go back to the way I did an inventor. And Henry's sitting there. He's just like, watch this, 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 and that. And we did three commands. Whereas when I would sit down with the program itself play with it, learn how the extrudes work and the cutting and, you know, how I got different features different ways. I might do six commands, whereas Henry might do three. But it made so much more sense to do the those six commands when I was first learning. Yeah, it's all user friendly right. to somehow you interpret the software. Right. 100%. And yeah. is his a, a more effective? I mean, to a degree. Oh, but, yeah. Henry, Henry's all about efficiency, though. Right. But that's all the thing about CAD, though. You want it to be as accurate as possible with the least amount of measurements. So when you change one measurement, yeah. the entire thing doesn't get screwed up. Well, 100%. And the other thing is that Henry, as we got it later into him, Henry was able to pick him up much faster than I was because now I am, you know, not behind, but I'm learning those newer commands that Henry's been using since week one. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. No, exactly. Efficiency is key. Yeah, no. I the only reason I brought the CAD thing up was because of uh, the fact that I'm pretty sure Mech do you, do you use it at all in statics. In statics, no. So this Mech 100 is the only time I'll be touching it. Hopefully, um, unless one of my later later on IME courses uh, needs CAD. Well, you uh, may have to design some stuff because in IME you have some like more lab classes where you like go through right. processes. Yeah, and that's a lot of CAM though. Yeah. I know it's the same idea. It's the same concept, but it's yeah. not as so like CAM is almost more like toy boxy to where it's like it mm-hmm. might it's it might be dumbed down a little bit more like the the detail and like the catting part, but like the manufacturing part like NX. Yeah, like you would like manufacturing NX is just you don't you, you don't can't, you can't. So but it's, it's like, a concept. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's You've a already seen it though in your first IME class. There's CAM, there's CAD, there's coding, there's everything. Right. IME is a mix of everything. The thing is yes. that you have to start, you have to learn how to transfer your work, right? Yeah. Yeah. The only issue is I'm going to get through my only CAD class that I'm aware of and not really learn too much of that process between the relationship between, between CAD and CAM. Because at the point of, in my industrial engineering courses, um, from what I've understood through my first one so far, is that the professor doesn't care what CAD or CAM software right. you use as long as you get it to the one he wants that co- cooperates with the machine that's going to produce or manufacture your project. And um, I think there's benefits to taking IME first, and then there's also benefits to taking ME first. I think, personally, I like taking MAC before I took IME. I think that's the way to go. Because I, I, I do, I would say it's the way to go just because now you know how 3d modeling works you can understand you know your engineering drawings that there's not a lot of explanation right there's an ime it's kind of uh, not under the assumption that you know how to 3d model but it does make it a lot a heck of a lot easier if you do know that it you literally apply the same thing to to something more difficult than cad in my opinion coding um Mm -hmm. okay people okay whether or not it's more difficult than CAD is completely up to the level of excellence you're trying to hit on both of those. Right. Um, but 
think about it this way. When, you, when you're talking about being thrown into something, not knowing how to do anything, mm-hmm. IME, the robot project, right? The competition. You're talking about CAD, CAM, encoding, right? Yeah. Um, you're lucky if anyone in your group knows how to write a basic code. Right. Yes. I, the first time I, the first time I touched a code branch or anything was at work when customers called in. I was like, what are they talking about? And my supervisor's like, oh, okay. So I'm going to have to explain to you how some basic things work on that. And I actually created like one or two programs in coding. And that was my basic level. So I kind of know what it looks like. I couldn't imagine being placed in a group with six dudes or and girl, whatever, um, where no one knows what code or looks like or how to do it because our we have a pretty well experienced coder uh, decently like not amazing but gr- kind of good the robot, the it robot still struggles you talking about yeah. for the robot project yes oh, okay where well, should you explain what the robot project oh is? yeah so project project, project. Uh, you guys project. Are still capturing audio right yes huh? They're still capturing yeah, audio. Yeah. So rolling. Cool. Yeah. All right. So the robot project, um, IME 100 is, or is it 101? Whatever 100. it is. 100. Uh, first, one of the first classes you take as freshman, uh, if you are an ME major or an IE major and... Almost every major. I feel like most, sure. yeah, most, ma- not computer science doesn't have to take it. I don't believe so, actually. Uh, so I think it's mainly... ME and IE, which you're talking about the majority of the school. And E's. E's take it. And E's, yes. E's take it. Um, And C's. So that that class. E's take it, surprisingly enough. uh, Sorry. So that class consists of a bunch of projects um, that are mainly supposed to stimulate what an engineering team project would look like. Uh, You have to work with a team in order to produce a goal. Um, and with the robot project, you're placed in a team of six, uh, and you are given, you know, a basic level Vex robot that drives, and your team is now responsible for redesigning, adding new features, so that your robot can compete in a uh, robot competition, which is essentially picking up and moving balls from one side of an arena to another. So um, where the coding comes in is that there's an autonomous aspect and your robot is supposed to move on its own for 30 seconds. So uh, as you can imagine, if you don't know coding, you're not screwed, uh, but it is much harder to get anywhere. I know speaking from our aspect, we only have one person that is uh, familiar with with the VEX program and he's all remote. So it's kind of hard to coordinate. Yeah. Um, He's got it set up real nice so that I can go in and I can just change like from right to left. But I can only imagine what kind of coding that took in order to get to that point. Like I got lucky with my group when I took it because I had a girl who works for Vex and then a kid who knew how to code and wanted to learn more. So right. that aspect of it, like it worked perfectly. That, yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, it, like if. God forbid I was the most knowledgeable on code. My group would never have gotten us. No. We won't get a single point in uh, the autonomous part of that competition. So what's I didn't also even know what a Vector robot was. Yeah. What's also great about that class is my group was the perfect example because we had those people who knew how to code, knew how to build the robot. She knew everything about it, and she knew how to use the manuals and all that. Um, when you're redesigning parts, I did all the CAD because I knew how to do that. We had another kid who knew how to build everything and take care of all that aspects right. of it clean little things up we had more of a designer but it all works out because you're a team and that's what a real job experience right i think that's the coolest part about that about that entire class it's not just that you have you know you're not just you know the projects themselves are cool right 100 percent. building a toy is cool building a puzzle box it's cool but you know redesigning the robot it's cool but the simulation of the real world is the best part in my mind about that entire I class. almost wish more classes were like that. I was going to say that yeah. exact thing. I was going to say, I think um, personally, and my idea stemmed off of someone who dropped a comment back a few months ago on a school, uh, I want to say a school website. It wasn't a school website, but discussion it was an issue. Board? That, yeah, it was, well, it was kind of a discussion board, but it was with Kettering. Kettering doesn't really do Canvas and discussion boards, but <laughs> um, where someone's parent, uh, who's a professor at another university in New York, 
said uh, they they kind of wish that more classes were taught at the idea of no tests and quizzes and rather right. or even if you want quizzes but yeah. no te- no no exams right maybe a final but a really like light final mm-hmm. and more Supply focus on the idea yeah. that kids aren't taking tests when they graduate they're going to be working on a team though and they're going to be they're going to be giving a timeline and they're going to be given a time a due date and you better produce something in that timeline to show for it right Mm -hmm. um which ime 100 is literally that literally that you get a due date a timeline things that you have to deliver a deliverable right and then an outcome uh and i think there's no quizzes there's no tests and there's no final no but that's the perfect class i think you're 100 percent correct I think it needs to be a good balance because obviously there are classes that you have to have quizzes, have tests. But I will say, I don't know about you because obviously you had him at your disposable. But when I was looking at colleges, um, I was looking at him really late. I was looking at him when COVID was like now a thing. Oh, really? Like, ser- like when I was seriously looking at classes, I was in lockdown. So I was calling and like going based off order. So... I had visited MSU based on I visited for their Green and White Day, which you know you can never, never judge a university based on, on their, the day when on the day that they're off. showing everything off. Uh, yeah. That's my advice to anybody watching this. Slapping it's like a used car salesman slapping yeah. the top of the car. Don't, yeah. don't ever do that. I did not know much about Kettering until I actually right. came here. Is so I was told my thing with Kettering was I heard about it through my professor, through people I worked with at the golf course. You know, GMI, great school, right? So I applied because, you know, I want to become an engineer. That's what I've been told. Uh, you know, it was originally owned by GM. I think that's sweet. Yep. So applied based off merit alone. Never would have thought I ended up here. I thought I was going to MSU on the full ride for the Evans Scholars. And when I found out about that falling through, I actually had to visit schools, right? So I right. visited I visited Western. I, that was cool because I got to visit there on my own, see what it was actually like. I was in uh, one of their scholarship competitions. Did decent in it. Didn't get the full thing, so it's not like I was jumping to go there. But it was definitely top two. It was between there and here. And the only reason that here was still left was because, well, I didn't get a chance to visit it, so how can I really cross yeah. it off? I didn't like MSU because MSU's... Uh, engineering program scared me in the sense that it was all lecture halls like yeah. that's all it was yeah and i don't think you can really you know i think it's possible you can learn uh, you can learn yeah you can be an engineer you can be an engineer schools. from those schools i'm not saying you can't i'm saying it for me personally to learn some of the concepts that we're learning in a lecture hall compared to like the team setting that you have in ime and don't get it twisted we can only do that because we have a small school that's the beauty of the school. Right. That's 100% the beauty of the school. That's why I love how hard it is to get in. So you right. can read out the kids that aren't serious. Well, and I, and so what sold me was I talked to the academic, uh, not, I want to say counselor, but um, advisor. Whoever like is the recruiter. 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 Yeah. Lucas. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know yep. what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Um, I had, like, I think it was like a two hour conversation while I'm in lockdown because they had, thank God they extended the, um, what day you could commit to the school by yep. or else I would have been going to Western for sure. Mm. I mean, at that point, if I had to choose on that normal day, I would have just been like, ah, oh, Western's the only one that really sticks out. So I would have said, here you go. Because I went there and they had their engineering college was pretty cool. Their engineering college only has one lecture hall. You know what the rest of their, the rest of their entire campus looks like as far as engineering goes? What? Straight labs. Nice. It, like literally looks like a dream and they're like yep you're going to be doing a lot of projects that will be your grade uh so i was like hey this is cool this is sweet so glad i didn't go there so glad i ended up here and it was yep. and it was because that lucas guy was like well you're at a smaller school so there are a lot less tests and a lot more group projects which like you said there you know it doesn't feel like there are but i feel like if we were at those other schools we would appreciate it a lot more yes yeah, absolutely. But also, a thing about a school like this, it's, I guess, prestigious. You can say prestigious. Right. It has in a sense. It has some some lore to it. It's, it's yeah. got it's got some. When you say the name, it's got some. You know, it has some meaning behind yeah. it. And it's got, as long as you understand its history, right. and You know a little bit about it. If you're if in you, the industry, you know it. Yes. it. Yeah. Well, I always lead with I'm from the old GMI. I know. I know. I'll say Kettering University, but I'll quickly follow it up with 
GMI. The form, yeah, the former GMI. Yep. But also, a school like this offers opportunities that no other colleges offer. 100%. Like, I'm just like, not even saying college. it's from like... There's only one other school with co-op, and you don't even get paid for it. Where yeah. is that at? I well, think it's California. Yeah. Oakland, you can do co-ops. It's just not like the entire full year. That's what I'm saying. Well, so that's the thing is that other schools do offer co-ops. That's yeah. that's yeah. Other but schools here do. is the beauty because it's required. Yes. Yes. I mean, do can can you? You get college credit for going. Here. Exactly. Like, Could you say to yourself, well, you know, I don't really want to work for three months, and I just want to sit down on my butt. Sure. As long as, as long as you're not past your junior year, you could do that. Yeah. But why would you? Right. You know? Yeah. It's no. forcing you to get used to an environment. Right. And then not only that, co-op-wise, there's also a lot of experiences during school while you're here. Right. Like... The SAE team does it. SAE sweet. teams. You can do snowmobiles. You can do off-roading. You can do F1. You can do all these different types of teams at the point where there's even a BattleBots team. Like, that's not offered anywhere in Michigan except for here. Yeah. No, I think we just talk about, like, the odds that the six of us came together at this school is kind of cool. Um, right. Yeah. Like Noah said, he was one deadline shift from not even being here, yeah, right? Yeah, not even, not even um, Henry was one family decision away from going to Lawrence Tech. Mm-hmm. Ethan was one, one decision away from picking Michigan Tech. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going here. I was going uh, trade school. That's really? what I wanted to do. Yeah, I, I was... I had no interest in regular universities. Really? But I don't want to go sit on a campus for a bunch of kids. Did not know that. Yeah. So, I don't want to sit in a room or a lecture hall all day. I, was, I don't want to complete that. I job. was, like, uh, s- s- between six different schools. I was, like, two email chains away from not even being in the same state. So, yeah, think about how crazy it is to even be here sitting here at the same so, time. That's actually... I, that's odds are insane. First of all, yeah. yeah. But I don't think any of us were tested here. here. I don't even know what that, I don't know what Dell's intentions were in college, right. so I can't speak on yeah, his behalf. But, behalf but, but I do know everyone else's situation where it's like. That's interesting that you say that though about the whole like I don't want a desk job. Yeah. Because when I th- when I thought engineering, originally high school, right? I'm thinking nine to five, design some stuff. You know, be part of the automotive industry. Cool. And, yes, that's and, a lot of what it is. And that's a lot of what a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. But obviously now that you're here and you understand how many different applications an engineering The entire degree, automation industry. Exactly. Not automotive. Don't hear me wrong. No, automation. Yeah. So, Sorry. No, I'm not even talking about you. I'm okay. listening to the, you know, the listeners too. But, but Even the design engineers, the buildings they work in, they're still right. their labs. They still do physical no, stuff. No, 100%. No, that's and, what I love about and it. And that's what I'm saying. Is before before I came here, I genuinely thought, before I entered into this university, I thought, I'm going one of two ways. I'm going to sit on CAD all day, all day, just get to design things, right? Get to mm-hmm. play with the bodies of cars, whatever, right? Or, you know, even interior systems. Yeah. Or I'm going to come here, I'm going to learn the lingo, whatever, and I'm gonna end up as a salesperson and just sell engineering parts. Don't yep. get me wrong; still, two very real possibilities. Yep. But since I've been here, I've been like, well, I could fit in this part. I could fit in this department. Like it's, you know, yep. and seeing that in the co-op is insane. Yeah. And your options are open. Like, there mm-hmm. isn't go to college. You don't even know what you're going to get a degree for. Right. You could get a degree that you're gonna hate your job, mm-hmm. or even in the sense that you know you want your degree, but there's other jobs out there. Like Dominic's an IE, but He's not a traditional IE. He's doing a job that not all IEs do. Exactly. But yeah, that fits yeah. him better. Yeah, no, like um, at my company, I don't think the word before engineering means anything. No, yeah. I think, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in a job like that, it's personality over specific degree. It's worth work ethic. Or, yeah, it's work personality. ethic and personality. It's personality, work ethic, um, gratitude, and uh, maturity, I think. Those yeah. are the main four. I think, and I think all that comes in addition to blank engineering. Yeah. Bachelor's yeah. in blank engineering. I don't yep. think it's... It doesn't matter what it is. Right. Um, the company is, I don't know the, the split, but I do know um, com- electrical engineers are m- the vast majority, and then there are a solid group of computer engineers, mm-hmm. um, and then there are, uh, there's no bio chem there's no chemical engineers uh there's 
only one full-time hired mechanical engineer. Really? Um, soon, I'm soon thinking that number is going to change. We have some great co-ops. Um, so that number, I, in my opinion, uh, again, I'm not, I'm a freshman co-op. Make them skyrocket, guys. Come on. I'm a freshman co-op, but I, the, the other Emmys at the company, uh, you know, the other freshmen that I work with, the junior one, who's really Anthony's age, and then the, uh, the other junior one in the B section, all three great, great students, great, right. great workers, whatever. So that number is subject to change. I would be the first uh, industrial engineer ever to be hired there. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, that's what's up. Also, I think there might be some software engineers from some sub subgroups in the company that used to be not part of the company, but now are just random stuff, but right. you know, excuse me, but I don't know. What were we just talking about before? Uh, uh, we were talking about the team experience, about how it's... After that. Uh, yeah. How we all came here coincidentally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to go back to that. So, um, just going over, like, real quick, just everyone's, like, few, like, they're, everyone's list, right? So, Henry was applied to Lawrence Tech, Kettering. I don't remember what else if he applied to those are the two big ones those are his main ones mm -hmm. ethan was michigan tech kettering or his big ones um still applied to certain ones if as long as the application is free right um i applied to 10 schools because the fafsa covered 10 schools for me so that was kind of cool as long as you did it before a date you had mm -hmm. all of them for free um uh, i don't know how many you applied to anthony you i just wanted to go here that's really all i wanted to go to mm -hmm. but i applied to oakland just in case yep. i still wanted to and then macomb yeah so Let's see. I did both Michigan, Michigan State, mm -hmm. LTU, uh, Kettering, and mm -hmm. then I did uh, Western, and I believe that was it. I, I think I, I think I did, or I was gonna do Stanford, and then I was like, you know what? I don't want to pay to get rejected because I yeah. knew, I knew that rejection was coming. Yeah. So I did um, Michigan Tech, which was my first response letter, which was my first congratulations letter mm -hmm. i got um accepted at msu but they wanted to see my seniors transcript to determine how much if they wanted to give me any money or whatever and i was like that's kind of insulting considering i knew right. plenty of high schoolers in my same high school who got accepted so that immediately bumped them off my list i thought that was in really like really insulting joke. it was a joke um and i took that personally i took that personally <laughs> Uh, Michigan had me on the waiting list after my first application, nice. so they didn't deny me straight up, which I thought was hilarious because Michigan's basically Ivy League at Dude. this point. So, real quick, Michigan applied to the School of Engineering because I'm like, you know what? Screw this. Everybody does the LSA, right? Mm -hmm. I was talking to my ACT advisor, what I had like a tutor or whatever, and he went to Michigan. He's like, "Dude, just do it. Just go go for engineering, right?" He's like, "Everybody does LSA." He's like, he's like, but I'll warn you, you're better off like going, like applying to their, like drawing school or something that you think is going to be a little easier to get into, and then transferring. But if you want to do engineering, that's what you want to do. Go ahead, do it. So it's like, yeah, you know, balls on the wall. Did it? Got deferred. And dude, Michigan's so funny because they don't let you like, if you applied the first time, mm -hmm. I applied early, got deferred right yeah. or not or not deferred um what it's was just deferred? rejected rejected um there's another word that i'm looking for here um but it was basically it didn't say deferred mm -hmm. and it sounded like it was more of like rejected right i'm like yeah. oh shit okay so i call him i'm like i was like what what's this mean like is this just mean like i'm like done if so it's fine right and they're like no it just means like you can't change the school that you uh that you applied to. So you can't like now apply to the school of LSA for the second round. I was like, well, that's kind of stupid. Right. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, well, we shouldn't have applied to the first school in the first place. I was like, all right, cool. So they, right. they bumped me off my, off the list. So I was like, all right, cool. Whatever. Right. So I think that would have been at three schools, right? That was Michigan mm -hmm. tech, MSU, Michigan. Yeah. Um, I also applied to, uh, Kettering obviously was my fourth right. one. Um, I applied to, uh, Wichita State, uh, that was at the time when I was trying to go for bowling uh, scholarship. Bowling scholarship. Um, then I also applied to University of Wisconsin Whitewater, mm -hmm. um, Indiana at Bloomington. So Indiana accepted me. Uh, also, I applied to Notre Dame, um, waiting list again there. And then Ohio State rejected me. And then my last one was Oregon, which accepted me. Nice. So I got rejected by overall at the end of the day. 
Michigan ended up reject like and turning down like canceling my waiting list, basically dropping me, yeah, bumped me, um, because I I um, declared Kettering. Right. So basically, I got hard rejected by Ohio State. Um, Notre Dame ended up bumping me shortly after I got put on the waiting list. Right. And Michigan was a long waiting list, but I got bumped anyway. So I basically got in everywhere except for. Um, those three which wait at the time i was like oh it's like i have so many options and i was like well i'm not going to wisconsin whitewater and i'm not going to wichita state because you know, mm-hmm. those are both belonging scholarships not going there so i knocked those off that leaves five left right so i'm looking at michigan state michigan and or not michigan michigan state michigan tech kettering oregon and indiana mm-hmm. so i'm sitting there and i'm like how much is it to go to indiana how much is it to go to oregon right. how much is it to go out of state, right? Pricing and everything out. Indiana, Oregon cost the same. That means I can immediately scratch off Indiana. I wanted Oregon more than anything. So there's no way I'm going to pay the same price to go to Indiana if I can pay the same price to go to Oregon. Right. Scratch Indiana off. Um, Michigan Tech was still on the list because it was literally so cheap compared to other, everything else. Um, I think if I went to Michigan Tech now, it would still be probably half what I pay here. So, oh, God. No, yeah, it's crazy. For real? Yeah. Dude, they got free snowboarding up there. Why didn't you do that? Got what? Free snowboarding up there. No, before, um, literally, like, the f- the first thing I got was, like, um, like you know how, I don't like, like talking about financial too much, but it was literally um, four digits. For real? For the full year. That's insane. Yeah. It was, like, it was nine grand, but it was it was four digits. Right, but still. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's nuts. So, um I only declined them because it's the freaking UP, and I didn't want to go up there. I didn't want to go up there. I like the UP, but I'm not. I'm not going to travel up there. I would never see my family. And that that again, there's no co-op. So I'm looking at it now. I'm basically like Michigan Tech's backup backup option. Right. Michigan State, insult to me, not going there. Now it's basically just between Kettering and Oregon, right? So I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, some emails got to go out. So I'm looking. I'm looking. I get my offers from both Michigan, I mean Kettering and Oregon. Private school in state versus public out of school are scary close. Really? Scary close. Very like, like to the point where they shouldn't be close or to the point where you think Well if it was any other private school besides Kettering, it wouldn't be as close. Um, I think it's scary close simply because uh just the private factor. I don't okay. think it matters. If you would have went to Hillsdale, it would have been just as expensive as right. Kettering for me personally. Or or if you go an hour north to north to Northwood, you think? Northwood would have been cheaper, I'm pretty sure, okay. um, than Kettering and Hillsdale, but I wasn't going to go to Hillsdale. And uh, North, North, I was I was originally going to apply Northwood, um, but I decided against it after I kind of like ended my whole thing of, because before I picked schools is I bounced back from like five different professions I wanted to go into. Right. First thing I wanted to do was I wanted to one day own a car dealership. So I don't know if you know anything about that yes. in Michigan. Hard to do. Right, close to impossible. Close to impossible, but your chances go from like zero to like twenty percent if you yeah. go to Northwood, right? No, it's uh, so there's a reason why they call it the dealership university. It's crazy. So um, they were immediately caught my attention. Did ended up not going there um, because I no longer wanted to pursue that path. Uh, and then there was a short period of time where I decided if I even wanted to go to school. There was a long time when I just wanted to become a DNR officer, a game warden, and just you know live off that seventy grand a year paycheck and live a great life somewhere where I enjoy every day, where I go to work, and I'm outdoors. Right. That would have been awesome. Um, but then I decided I'd rather live a little bit larger than that, chase a little bit more money, hopefully enjoy my latter years, you know, and then get to still because I'll still experience the outdoors as much as I do now. Um, but I'll be chasing a bag for a little bit longer, I think. So, or, uh, or a little bit shorter, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I don't know what you're saying. So, so I, I decided, to age is a I did, younger. yeah, but so I decided, decided yeah. um, against that. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go, I'm going to get a degree. I probably have to do something mathematics related. It's my strong suit. I decided, um, senior year that I was either going to be engineering or just straight up mathematics major and go to become a professor. That was my idea, a professor or a high school teacher. Um, because for the longest time I was like, like I'd be, cause I coach sports for, you know, I'm young by coach, coach sports for four years now. Right. And I was like, dude, I'd be the, a great coach, professor, coach, teacher combo. But then I was like, you know, they just don't get paid what they should. So long story short, it, would, it really just came down to the end of the day was engineering or, um, I forget the, oh, I think it was like graphic design because I like to, like I'm pretty <laughs> artistic. So 
uh, it was like graphic design at Oregon, or it was going to be engineering and catering. And at the end of the day, emails were sent back and forth between, you know, UO and me. Um, couldn't come down to anything because simply it's out of state and out of state tuition they don't budge on simply because 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 you haven't been paying uh, the state's taxes for, for the first 18, 18 years of your life um, so they were gonna get their their 18 years out of you by charging you the price that they do for four years which is nuts. so, so basically, basically um, for in-state students it would have cost for a kid like, like, like me in Oregon all the same stats and school um, merit and financial standing would have been like 25 grand a year. So like, you know, not that, not, not awful, not awful, no, right? Could, and could be a lot worse. Could, could be, be a lot worse. worse. And then because I'm out of state, they wanted to charge me 46 grand a year. 40, 46 grand a year. It doesn't even include housing or travel fees. It doesn't include housing. It doesn't include travel fees. It, it, includes it doesn't include housing after freshman year. Like no, it does. If it, it was if I does it was it? if it was if I stayed in that in those dorms for all four and a half years, or four years. That's nuts. So, it, either I'm not arguing that's not nuts because I was I those, that email chain was spurred off the thing. I was like, hey, would be one of my one of one of my not not my biggest dream, but one of my dreams to you know go here, right? And it was like. I want to make it happen, but there's just no way that from my financial background that I'm going to be able to dig out of 46 grand a year for four years. Right. Yeah. I don't, it would no co-op program. That's no, damn, so that's, that's, that's debt for 15 years of your life. Oh. If you're lucky. And so, I mean, even if you got, even if, even if you got an internship for the summers, I mean, you're not, yeah. you're not going to make the money you make at a co-op. Here. No, no. So I'm sitting here like basically begging the school for mm -hmm. some help with the financial aid. And I'm just like, even if it's like 40, like, and this is a huge jump, right. huge jump from 46 grand to 30 grand. But I'm like, that's literally like the max I could probably pull off. Right. And they're like, there's just no way we could let that happen. And I was just like, okay, well then that's probably the end of our communications then. Cause there's that's nothing yeah. I can do about it. So that's, that's basically, basically that email, email chain is what led me to staying in state here and ending up at this school. Um, but yeah, so basically it would have been, um, at first, it was probably going to be bowling scholarships would have would have taken me, and that would have been a different university out of state. Uh, then, secondly, I almost applied to Northwood and probably would end up would have would have gone there. Um, and then, almost was a DNR officer and didn't even go to school. And then, almost went to the West Coast for graphic design, and then ended up an engineer in Flint. So, and now we're here. Yeah. Yep. So think about that. Those are literally different pockets of the country. That's insane. But you chose Flint, Michigan, so. The I did choose Flint, Flint Michigan, Michigan over, Flint, Michigan. over Flint, Flint, the Northwest. Ve vehicle City, maybe. Vehicle City. <laughs> they one Water City. Water City. We, we have, we have the H2O for you. What's life like on campus, though? So, a small campus in Flint? I mean, that, that's a whole another day in itself. Yeah. But let, let's, I'll put it to you this way. If you're looking for the college experience, simply the college experience. Don't go here. We have don't, parties. Don't we have come oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to me. Don't listen to Anthony because Anthony's got this weird way of spinning some shit. Don't come here if you are looking for the peak college experience. Okay. You're but here if to you work. want a future, think about you it. You want a future and you want a good education, come here. I am at no means dogging the school. I am yes. just saying that I do know. You can go to other schools for the parties. School knows. Right. You can't go to other schools for education. Yeah, yeah. the school knows. The school knows, the where, school knows where it's at. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. Hey. But. I will tell you what, I came here to Kettering because I was here, I'm here to, you know, think about my future. I'm not here yep. to think about partying at all. Yep. But I will say my mom was not on board with me coming here. Why is that? Because, so my mom and dad, right, they met at MSU uh, right. as Evan Scholars. Okay. Right. My mom is a teacher. With, so it's in the family. Right. So my mom, my mom was a teacher as a bachelor, or with or as with a master's. Right. So she went to school after getting her bachelor's in yep. teaching, and my dad went to MSU on a um, on the same scholarship. So they lived together. Uh, the Evan Scholars program, really great program. I thought I was going to be the next generation to do the same thing. Like, for my whole... So you failed your family? No, not at all. Because here's the thing. Dishonor. <laughs> Pretty much. Dishonor the family. No, so... Were you disowned? No, dude. They didn't so, throw you down the river? Dude, it was so... It was so weird because for... 
it's you ever have something that you wanted for like 18 years and then it, it, and then you're just told no it's just not happening so yes yeah okay so you've had it happen it sucks my it? entire life what i'm saying you all right it's another podcast okay whole another podcast we'll get into that <laughs> but so evan scholars is based on financial need right it's one of the big things it's cat you're you know you have to caddy to even qualify you have to have good caddy standings you have to be a good candidate, right? Like they're, right. they're not taking schmucks. They're taking kids who have proven that they're worth a full-ride scholarship because don't get it twisted. It's a full ride to a public university. Yep. Uh, so here in Michigan, it would have been Michigan or Michigan State. Yep. Um, but with that being said, when, you're, when both your parents get it, you kind of think like, oh, like this, like, you know, I'm, I got it. Everything all right over there? No. 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 Uh, Video podcast is gonna need some fucking work. I'll tell you that right, right now. Well, we, we got, got four minutes of the last forty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I am glad that we have the audio. Hopefully, not going. We do have the audio. So, yeah. as long as we don't screw it up and we yeah. click pause and save. All right. But anyways, so my dad tells me from the time I get my job at Lockmore to. Basically, till the day I get denied, even the day, even after the day I get denied, tells me, "Look, bud, if it weren't for the Evans, I wasn't going to college. I don't know what I was going to do, but I wasn't going to college. I just didn't have the financial needs to do it. Yeah, right. Couldn't apply for a loan, like nothing. Mm-hmm. He goes, I, I'm blessed enough to have been able to work my ass off to provide for you more than what was provided for me. He's like." You've done all you can, but financially, it's just not going to happen. You're not in financial need as far as they go. And I'm, you know, you, you never want to listen to your dad, right? You're always like, I, you know, I know more than he does. So work my ass off. I'm thinking, dude, I'm a shoe in. Like, no way. And I'm looking at all I'm the, a shoe in. Dude, I'm looking at all the other candidates. And yeah, I'm, yeah, it sounds cocky because it is. I, I was looking at all the other candidates. I was looking at their track records. I was looking at their, uh, you know, looking at the, Actual cur- curriculars that they were in, and I'm and obviously you can't look at every kid in Michigan because you don't know who's applying. I'm just looking at the kids that are applying from Lockham. I'm like, dude, I swear, like I swear, I'm the best candidate here, right? Mm-hmm. Wrote my letter, like wrote how much it meant to me, everything. Wrote how like there would not be someone else that wanted it nor would work harder than I would, right? Yep. As Get one does. Out. Right. Got denied. Yep. Obviously. Obviously. That's why I'm here. Yeah. So now you're I'm not here. poor or a minority. True. That's okay. That's, I guess you're true. That's true. Yeah. That is true. So I sit there and I'm like, well, fuck, do I actually want to go to MSU? No. I've thought that for, th- I thought when you think that for 18 years that you're going to be a Spartan. Yeah. You're like, and then it hits you like, oh, being a Spartan's not going to be free. Oh, it's not going to be as cool as I really thought it was going to be. It's really not as cool as you think it's going to be. MSU is a great school, 100%. Don't get me wrong. MSU is a great school. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have been a finance major there or a, you know. used to be better than it is now, but yes. But still, finance was the thing that I was looking to go into, finance or econ, something in the business field, business management. If I was going into one of those, I would have gone to MSU. But I was, like, determined to do engineering. And the idea, and like I said, the idea of learning engineering in lecture halls, it definitely can be done. It just can't be done by me. Yeah. And so when you have to reevaluate every school, you start looking at things like pricing and you look at like, okay, what's, what have you produced? So it came down to, I went to Western on an overnight visit because I had a scholarship competition. Mm-hmm. And my par- I don't know how I talked them into it, but my parents let me go up on my own, stay with us. Uh, Stay with a girl who went to Regina, who I uh, who I met through like the the dances and whatnot, and I was like really good friends with her younger brother, the Demanskis. You know the Demanskis? Releasing uh, high school information and oh, whoops, it's whatever. But yes, yeah. So you know yeah. the Demanskis. They went to the same middle school as you did. So I'm really good friends with yes. the son. So my parents are like, fine, you can go up. I was supposed to have someone go up with me. They canceled at the last minute. I go up. I visit. I do the scholarship competition. I do pretty well. I'm like, hey, I, I actually like really like it up here, right? You know, this price is going to be pretty decent. 
came down to after I got my merit scholarship from here and uh, the scholarship from there, I think it was like a $5,000 difference between here and there. It was cheaper to go there. And I'm thinking, dude, am I really about to turn down Western? And my parents aren't saying anything. I'm like, what do you, like, what do you guys think? Like, what do you, like, financially, what do you think is going to be better? Nothing. They just keep saying, it's got to be your decision. It's got to be your decision, right? COVID hits. Deadline gets extended. My dad's like, well, let's, you know, we've been in the house for 14 days straight. Let's just go on a drive. We drive up here. And if you drive past Kettering, you wouldn't realize that you drove past Kettering. Like, yeah. if you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, no, not really. You, you're you like, oh, there's three of their buildings. Where's the rest? That's all. Nope, three. that's it. There's three. <laughs> so we drove past. Oh, four. Okay. Sorry, four if you count the rack. There's five coming up. Five soon. Four, five, almost six. There's going to be six eventually. We won't. Six. Wait, I wasn't even counting the rack in the building. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you, got are the we a, about? you got the AB, AB, Campus Central, Thompson Hall, and the Mott. That's four. That's four. Then you get the rack. Then you get That's the, five. And then six if you count the new building. Okay. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. So you guys right. forgot. Right. Don't know which one you guys are forgetting, but. <laughs> Listen to me. Were you guys forgetting the Mott? Probably. I was forgetting yeah. the Mott because yeah, I haven't had, I've had one class in the Mott. Yeah. But. At the we end of the got a tunnel. Huh? We have a tunnel. MSU no, I, 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 MSU, I, I, MSU doesn't have crap. I will not tunnel. lie. No, I, I have not have heard of another school that has a has a, a tunnel, tunnel under a main road. I don't have to. Stadium's sign says Mark Ingram the second. On. I must. I must say our stadium for not having any sports team. Our stadium is pretty sick. It's yeah. pretty dope. Mark Ingram stadium. the second is on the name. Mark Ingram is dope. A step it down. Is. I, don't know, I don't know why. He's on that field. Is he? Is that why it's yes. on there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Step, a Did step he go to down. Powers or what did he do? I don't know where he went. I don't know where he went. He didn't. I don't know. He's from sure Flint. He, okay. he probably went to. Um, okay, never mind. I'm gonna just shut my mouth. Well, I was just gonna say. I think he went. To, if he, that's where Powers plays. That's where their home games are. Oh, I'm sure. Um, it's right on the Flint River. <laughs> Blustrous. Anyways, yes. so we drive past it, and I'm like. <laughs> Shit, man. Where was the campus? Like, where was? Where is everything? Right? I get on that call. I'm not. And I kid you not. I'm on the phone with that Lucas guy for like two to three hours. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm asking him anything and everything I can about the school. Right? And it comes down to this. It comes down to at the end of your co-op term, the five thousand dollar difference. It's not going to be any different. It's going to be cheaper here than it will be there if you pour in. If you actually secure a co-op, and you return on you return your investment and you, here. Yeah, yeah, your return on your investment here is like nothing other. And he tells me about this story of how when he gets out of college, he goes and applies to all these schools or all these places of work, and he just he can't get in because the economy was a little down, right? Yep. But he said the biggest thing was. He didn't have any work experience, right? Yep. So yeah, if you do go to a typical university, you can get a summer internship, but when are you going to be able to get that summer internship? Most time, most of the time, it's not going to be your freshman year. Yeah. Right? Because at that point, you hardly have any school experience. Mm-hmm. You've been taking gen eds. Whereas yeah. here, it forces you right into it. Right. So he tells me that, and I'm like, dude, like, could I really like turn this down? Like, is there really another place to go? Well, think about find yourself today at Western. Right. Would you have been satisfied? That's the thing is I don't know. I just, to this day still don't know. I, I was thinking about it today because I I said to my dad I go hey you remember when we took that car ride up to Kettering and you you know up to this point he was like it's got to be your own decision it's got to be your own decision right mm-hmm. but as we're driving out so we drove literally we weren't here for more than ten minutes yep. yeah there's not much we more were, to look yeah, at no drove past it turned around realized there was nothing else started heading back. As we're heading up the hill on Chevrolet to the signs, he's like, well, you know, start spitting out facts about, you know, like, you know, this school, three months on, three months off, that's pretty cool. And, you know, you get the uh, the dropout rate of X, Y, and Z, or, you know, the job security rate of X. Yeah, he's like, employment that's, rate after school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what it was. Employment rate after school is this. He's like, it's... It's 60, upwards of 80%. Yeah. Is it higher than that? It's upwards than eighty percent. I also think it's ranked somewhere in the top. Oh, of course it is. Top yeah. number one in Michigan. Number yeah, well, no, he's, that's what Michigan. he says. He goes, it's number one in Michigan. I think it's top ten in the country. Yes, it is. It's top four engineering schools in the country as well. Yes. When he said that, that was like when my dad like showed like, dude, please do not pick what like his Western. choice. That was his. Choice. That was his choice. Yeah. And I go, 
well, shit, dude, I was already thinking this is going to be a little better than Western as far as job security goes. But now that I know, like, my dad's on board, I'm like, dude, am I really about to say no? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, you know, sold at that point. I'm like, yeah. all right, whatever. Let's do it. Right. That's the thing about me, though. I had no interest in regular universities. No. Well, I don't like lectures. I don't like big campuses. I don't like parties. I don't like university life. So, vice versa. I'm talking to your mic. <laughs> I am talking to my mic. <laughs> vice versa of that, we get home, right? Yeah. And my mom pulls me to the side and goes... Did you really see that campus though? She goes, "Are you really gonna have a college experience?" She's like, "I, I." She's like, "You've you've grinded for four years now at high school, right?" Keep grinding. Grinded. Keep grinding. Keep grinding. No, no. Don't she stop. no. Four, she four more years of your life. Yeah. She goes. She well, that's what she said to me. She goes, "Do you really want to grind for four more years, or do you just want to go yes. and get a degree and you know be a kid for once?" Right, so now I've you got to be a kid like, and get a good degree, dude. Listen, so now I'm kid. like, now I'm literally like thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, if I, no matter what I pick, I'm upsetting a parent. Like there is no win in this situation. So that's when I yeah, but think about this way: you come from Kettering, transferring to Western is a hell of a lot easier from going oh, from Western to Kettering. No, one hundred percent. So that's what it came down to. I was like, you know what, dude, screw it. I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm gonna go to Kettering. Mm-hmm. If I don't like it, I will transfer out. Right. Yes. Glad I did it. Can't say that when I go and visit places like Central or MSU that I don't think, dude, Kettering is lacking. Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, like, 100%. Well, In big, the party aspect, sure. Just well, the social aspect. The social like, aspect, and, and dude. All. Because, like, look at this. So we're having a podcast here at midnight, right? Yep. What are the three other kids in this house doing? Playing video games. Playing video games and what? No, something else. All their doors are shut. All the lights are off. They're alone. And they're on. That's the, what the entire dorm hall looks like. They're on their, yeah, they're on their All headsets. night. That's, that's what the entire dorm looks like. Do you know what other dorms do all day long they have other the, schools? They have their doors open. They they're talking. Party, they're walking around. They're walking around. Yeah. Hanging out with people. Right. That's how mine was when I was here, though. It's different. I, I, I know it's different. I, I, I know it's different, Anthony, but it's not. Is it? Is it? Prime, though? prime, yes. prime Kettering. I don't see Prime Kettering. Prime matching Kettering. Up with prime. It doesn't match. It doesn't match. Prime Kettering dorm social life is like COVID social life at a normal school. Right. Yeah. That's just what it is. But you know, and I'm and like I said, I'm 100 percent happy with my choice. Yeah, me too. But I mean, it's just I look at it like high school. Right. That's all I'm looking at it. Yeah. It's like, is what's the, do I really, I'm not going to join a fraternity. I'm not going to care about Greek life. I don't care about clubs. Just like in high school, I never joined a club. Right. Club. Right. If sports were a huge bonus. I don't really think you can talk about clubs though, because clubs here are insane. We They're insane, clubs. but I have no, I have no interest in the world for any of them. Oh, okay. So you're just saying clubs in general, no matter what school you're at. Don't any, any time, any extra time I spend at, at school, whether it was high school or college on campus is more time I've lost for my life, in my opinion. Yes. And that's just... this very grim way. I, I, the way I look at it is, yes, it might be BattleBots, it might be uh, F1, it might be right. any SAE, whatever it is. I'm not a formula guy. I'm not a robot guy. I'm not a car guy. I'm not... Uh, intramural sports is the closest thing they have here to me right. and that's saying something. So for any other... You can name all the clubs you want on their extensive list. They're great. But they're for Kettering kids. By the way, we're not losing a single... I am game. Just side note. No, I don't think so. I don't. That's a challenge to anybody that might be watching this. That's but, from Kettering. I I don't see us losing a five on five. No way. Full court. No way. No way. But that's also what I love about Kettering for me personally, because I don't want the party life. I don't want to be a kid. I want a future. No, so do so I. So I can be comfortable in the future. No, so no, so life. do I. But there are there times where I'm, I'm not talking about party life for no, that. I'm, about, I, I'm, I'm just I saying. See. Are there times where I wish I could walk out of my dorm room and be like, "Yo, what's up?" To whoever the hell is walking past, and they're not checking what shoes they have on today. Like, dude, next time you walk walk into the AB, right? Uh-huh. Walk the tunnel in the AB, and you walk past someone. Count how many times you walk past a kid, and they forget what kind of shoes they have on in other words i'm, I'm being dead serious that's the what they do they look right down to the ground it's kind of funny like when you walk past the janitor or something he like knows nobody's gonna answer but i always answer him, no so dude he gets, i like, always caught am- off guard they are always caught off guard uh, yeah. whenever i say stuff to the security guards when they're like i'm not just walking into the building right. they're like they're surprised they're like yeah, does like, this could go here yeah. right like they'll say like hey how's your day going so i'm Whatever. great how about you and i'll answer like, and ask no and i think that's and i don't think that's just the type of 
school it is, I think it's the type of person that becomes an engineer. Yeah. You know? Yep. Oh, definitely. Because that's the thing is that at other schools, you know, you're not living with other engineers. You know, you might be, but the yeah. majority of kids aren't engineers. Aren't engineers. Now you're putting all of that now type you're of person in one spot. All that type of personality in one place. In one place. Yeah. In the middle of Flint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether you literally they're concentrating it at a high volume, and there's just nothing you can do about it. Right. And are there normal kids that go here? Sure. I mean, oh, 100 percent. Look at us. I mean, I like to think that we're pretty, pretty normal, normal. Yeah. But say that you know we are the majority would be a lie. Oh, yeah, we're not even close. 100%. Not even close. There is a good percentage of kids just like us, but outnumber it severely. And that one is, to ten. And in that aspect, I am a minority. So. Yes. Uh, there you go. That's you should have got the scholarship. That's there. the point. You're, you're wrong in that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> you should have got the scholarship. No, I... I no, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. no. You, are a, you are a minority in some aspects. I, I want to... Yeah, well, diabetic. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. diabetic. That's the point. Uh, yeah, in case that's you guys ever hear my Game Boy, as they like to call it, go off or see me look down. I've done it a couple times. Uh, don't worry. I'm just... Uh, you just playing Pokemon. <laughs> no. I'm not playing Pokemon. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's playing Tetris. <laughs> no, um, it sounds like Tetris. Yeah. It it does sound like Tetris. Yeah, no, 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 no. Going for I, high score. How many times I wish I could like program a sound into it would be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like every time my blood sugar goes low, he's dying. He's dying. And so, yeah, <laughs> some just to mess with people. Oh. Yeah. You're about to die. You're you're about to die. Eat some sugar. Oh, you have ten minutes. It's too to late live. for you. Say goodbye to your friends. Oh, God. Hope there's people that you love around. Or Because you're not making it out of the room. <laughs> Don't die on the podcast. Don't die on the podcast. That's Don't just, die? Yeah. That's, Don't worry. If you're like Paul Blart, we got you. That'd be fucking hilarious. That'd be a great podcast so episode. You're running out of insulin. Can I just give you a sucker? Does that work like that? Uh, if you're running out of insulin. No, he's not running out of insulin. No. So like, so, okay. Oh God. No, that's your not blood sugar's low. Your blood little thing is, is giving okay, you blood insulin. Blood sugar's low and running out of insulin. Completely different things. Yeah, that's two Both different. happenings at once. Both, no. both is happening at once. No, can't happen. Backwards. Can't happen. It's inverses. Well, all right. So when you say running out of insulin, are you talking about my individual pump is running out of insulin? Yes. My body? What are we, what are we speaking here? His so body, I think. you're low on blood sugar mm-hmm. and your little pump is not supplying insulin anymore. But that's that's what the pump should do. If I'm low on it, so all right. If I'm low, you're thinking about backwards, Anthony. Yeah. Oh, if my okay. blood sugar is low, yeah, don't hey. want insulin. No okay. insulin. Okay, okay, okay. Insulin makes sugar go down. Oh, okay. Yeah. If my blood sugar is high, I yeah. want more insulin. Okay. Blood sugar, so the the blood sugar can go down. So all if right. you don't have access to the insulin, so the question still stands. Blood sugar goes up. If you're low on blood sugar, if my blood sugar is low, can I give you a sucker? You can give me a sucker. All right. If my blood sugar is high. You can't give me a sucker. I just shove some insulin inside of you. Well, you, you let me shove the insulin okay. inside of me. Yeah. But if you can't do that, though? I, there should be no reason as to why. The only reason, the only time that I pass out and you have to do something is I pass out because my blood sugar is too low. And then you give me this big shot that's just sugar water, essentially. Right. And it goes right into my thigh. So it's not like, so it, is Paul Blart legit, then? Can you carry well, the sugar he's not. He's not diabetic. He's, I know. uh... I'm looking, Hi, uh, I'm, looking it up. I'm looking it up. Hold on. Nope. It's it means his blood sugar is prone to go low. Yeah. Um hypoglycemic, I think it is. Yeah. Look it up. I think it's hypoglycemic. But basically means that Yep, hy- yep, hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemic. Glycemia, yeah. Um basically blood sugar goes low, right? Yep. It just it just happens. So that means his body is producing too much insulin. Okay. It's just, you know, it's overcompensating. Mm-hmm. Whereas my, in my case, my body's not producing insulin at all. Okay. That pancreas doesn't. Okay. Hypoglycemia is known as low blood glucose, glucose, low blood sugar. So your low blood sugar is caused by producing insulin from your it's, game boy so yeah so but too and too much of quantity yes and no so all right so your pancreas doesn't just produce insulin yeah it effectively i i'm gonna say this wrong and people are gonna come for me and they're gonna be like oh diabetic doesn't know what's going on the three people that are gonna watch right, us yeah, us 
But yeah, when we rewatch this later, we, you might make fun of yourself. I'm gonna post it on my socials. Yeah, well, no, obviously. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get people to watch it, but nobody. I gonna, think I think I think enough people will be interested. Be like eight followers. If, if I, I don't, I don't know if we're gonna get to the two hour twenty three minute mark, but if anybody we're, is out there, and oh, watching it yeah, this long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are very far in. The thing is, we have no we have no video, so. Well, we'll we'll do the video and then just put the logo for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do for the first one. Yeah. So, anyways, an hour and 14, so. your pancreas is very good at regulating the amount of glucose that's not just okay. produced, but in your system. Okay. So that's why your blood sugar is going to stay around the 100 mark all right. at all times. So your Game Boy acts as a pancreas? In theory, yes. Okay. It's getting, it's getting very good. They're getting very good at it. The only difference is, is that my pancreas, Game Boy, uh, the insulin it's giving me is... Expensive. Well, expensive, yes. Yeah, whole different conversation. Yep. Doesn't work instantly. Okay. It just it's a technology thing. Does not exist yet. It's not instantaneous. No. Whereas yours, boom. You eat you eat something with sugar in it mm. and insulin it is produced. Yep. Okay. So it's like you know, they explain it as a key and a lock. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So uh sorry to interrupt and that's the point, but um as much as I love talking about everything we've talked about so far, I think what two minutes, about today? Oh, two hours and 25 minutes is a great place to end the night yeah, and at, get this at, at get, midnight. So I can get my six hours of sleep. Yeah. get this uh, dropped in and uh, chopped up real quick for everyone. So, and that's it. That's the yeah, point. I think of that'll be the point that, that's the point. That's that, the point. That's the point. Hey, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, guys really hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah, if you're still here. If you're still here, what a trooper. I appreciate you. So yep. when I'm going back and listening to this later, Don't worry, I'll we'll really get more. appreciate you saying that. Yeah, exactly. We'll get more ignorant. <laughs> as 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 a you know, as a following starts up, hopefully they go back and rewatch our originals to go like, oh yeah. let's as let's see how let's as. see how they started. Yeah, as the first video has half video, so we'll yeah. see how it rocks. The, <laughs> it's like a daily wire video. When Ben Shapiro's doing his podcast, yeah. the first half of it is him. The last half you can't really watch. It's oh, just a picture of him. Okay. Even if you have a subscription, I think yeah. that's how it is. Uh huh. Okay. Well, uh I think yep, twelve oh five. All right, we're out of here. Deuces. Right. Deuces. That's the point. Stop right here. Go ahead, stop right here. Hold on. Square.